Good morning, Declan. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good, good, and you. Thank you, Declan, for everything. No, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Sorry, I was on a call when you called, so I. I... Yeah, I, I, I know that there was a session just before this one, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, we, here we go. We want to, to make everything on time and so on. Now, the first thing is, is uh, I'm going to make. I'm going to give hosting to to Yasmin. Or shared hosting? Sarah, 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 Sarah Halahle. Is that okay? I make not, not Sarah Jones, Sarah Halahle. Oh, Sarah Hal. Oh, Sarah. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to make Sarah co-host, and I'm going to make you a co-host, uh, Yosef. Just so we're covered. Uh, Is that okay? That's great. <laughs> so, Declan, are you staying with us in the session or you will leave us? I'm going to I'm going to be here pretty pretty much. I, I might be on mute for a bit, but uh, that's okay. That's okay. It's okay. Good. 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 Just so I'm not annoying you with. Uh... Okay. Uh, let's start. Uh, maybe welcoming uh, our uh, participants. Uh, I see now uh, my friend and my uh, colleague. Uh, his Excellency Professor Dia Din Arafa, who is the uh, Secretary General for the Higher Council for Science and Technology in Jordan. Dr. Dia, you are welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Dia. It is a good morning everywhere, but it's not. <laughs> definitely it's not. So it's a good afternoon and a good evening for somebody somewhere else. Somebody good night, maybe. <laughs> Okay, uh, let me welcome my brother, uh, Bubakar Bari. Bubakar is the CEO of the West uh, Central African uh, Research and Education Network. Yes, welcome, uh, Bubakar. Good day, everyone. Yeah, you're welcome. I have also my colleague and friend, and I like working with him because he's one of the leaders in the, who are leading at his own effort actually to bring uh, scientists and researchers together is Jawad Al Kharraz. Jawad? Good morning. Good morning, uh, morning Dr. Youssef. Good morning, everyone. Thank you Good. so much. Okay. Yeah, welcome. I think who else we have now? Uh, Professor Islam, also we work together. Maybe he's not, he's trying to connect his audio, so let's wait a minute. Good morning, Yusuf. Good morning, Islam. Uh, it is uh, nice and long glad time. to see you again. Long time, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. yeah, I'm very happy to see you again. And, uh, yeah, actually. Since, uh, since Islam, 2015, I think we haven't met. Uh, we met in 2018. Oh, in 2018, the of, yes. In the League of Arab States. Then you yeah. moved. And uh, uh, let me introduce uh, Professor Islam. He is now the Deputy Director of the uh, National. Uh, Authority uh, for remote sensing. Authority for radio, radio astronomy and remote sensing or something like Re that? Uh, yeah, remote sensing and space science. Space science, yeah. He's now the deputy director. Before that, he was working at the Ministry of Higher Education for inter uh, uh, international relations, I think. And uh, I saw your emails many times in correspondences with the European Commission. So okay. you, you did a good work at that time. Thank so you. welcome again. Thank you. Andrea. Good morning, Andrea. Andrea is the scientific director of the SISAMI. Good morning, Welcome, Andrea. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me in this, in this session. Thank you for joining it's, us. I thank you for the background behind I think, you. I, I think is that's, it? uh, yeah, that is SESAMI behind me. Yeah, yes, that's, uh, yes, something that's uh, really uh, fascinating and we are proud that it is also in Jordan. And yes, and it's, it's as I will elaborate 
data, it's essentially, this is for me a great chance to meet you all because this is the, the landscape in which Sesame is sitting and uh, the, we have to restart working now. Yeah? We have been, uh, we, we have survived COVID, but now we have to, uh, to really, really start uh, doing things. And uh, uh, I think that this, this audience is where, where we, we will start doing it. So I, I'm hoping that we, are, we will have enough enthusiasm to surf on for the future. Absolutely. All together, we can do we can do a lot of things to support uh, and serve our communities and uh, the mankind. Actually, we have we have many things to do and to serve if we work together. That's what we are looking for. What to do, to discuss in, uh, in today's meeting? Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. This is Nazar Hassan from Cairo. Alan. Alan, good morning, Dr. <laughs> Nazar. Dr. Nazar, is, uh, we have been working for uh, maybe uh, some time on promoting open science and working on open science and other aspects, but mainly my focus with him is on open science and uh, promoting open science platform and so on. We will take this further, uh, but uh, now for today, I know how he has very good thing to speak to, to us today. So thank you for accepting our invitation and to speak to this distinguished gathering. Thank you for putting it together. I think uh, it's it's great uh, to, to actually meet everyone. And uh, as uh, Mr. Andre just said, uh, it's good to, to meet everyone and uh, 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 let's start collaborating. That is that that is the important piece uh, that uh, the most important piece that would come out of this meeting. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think now we have His Excellency Professor uh, Am Salama. Yes, well, uh, good morning and uh, uh, good morning. It's nice to see you. Hi, hi, Andrea. Nice to see you hi, again. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you again. I, yes. I was just talking about you this morning uh, with Lina and uh, said that we would, would like to hurry up with our... Uh, yes, we uh, are... Together. We are almost there. Uh, Atif yeah. and I, we are uh, reviewing the, 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 the commas and things. <laughs> and then the, I think that next week we, we can make a meeting and uh, finalize everything. Excellent. And good morning, everybody. I can see Dr. Islam. Uh, good morning. Magna. Excellent. I can see how well uh, Dr. Arafa. And, uh, I see uh, many people. Uh, so you are. Uh, I, 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 how are you, Hassan, uh, Dr. Hassan? Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan wa sahlan, Dr. You, you have an, uh, a conference about open science, I think, uh, running nowadays with, uh, in Galala University, yeah? Huh? Yeah, the day it just yesterday. finished yesterday, actually. Yesterday, yes. Yeah. I'm sure. yeah, it was two days yeah. ago, yes. It was two days ago, okay. Yeah. Next. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Mm. That was quite good, actually. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Mm. Dr. Yusuf, Yani, you are making a very good gathering here. And yeah. uh, that's what we all said. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we, we uh, are looking forward to, to, to serve the community uh, and also to uh, uh, bringing people together towards working together bring, uh, is, the, is some kind of uh, platform that we can see how we can work together to serve our community, to serve our people, because no one can do things alone. I think uh, uh, we, we need to communicate, collaborate, uh, uh, use the technologies that enable this collaboration. Uh, and we are here to provide basically the initial technology and then the top of services applications portals mm. and all of that uh, which we which we will discuss today and we see how we can all together go to the next step in utilizing uh, this towards achieving the mainly the sdgs which are for the benefit of mankind Good, good. Now we have also uh, Lewis, Lewis from Latin America, our friend, uh, brother actually from Latin America. He is one of the supporters of collaboration and we, are, we have initiated several kinds of collaboration. I have presented yesterday to the 
uh, Argentinian uh, uh, MBO, 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 something like that, uh, on biodiversity and so on. Uh, and we are also have some collaboration <laughs> through uh, on uh, on uh, open science, uh, access, on open open access repositories, how to harvest these together. Uh, welcome, Lewis. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Well, it's, morning. it's morning here. Oh, good early <laughs> so, morning, actually. Yeah, it's 5, 5 a.m. Uh, wow. Sorry for but that. It's okay. Uh, wow. okay. It's okay. It's, it's, it's like a, a jet lag. Uh, and thank you very much, uh, uh, Joseph, for putting all these people in the same uh, in the same place. I think it's quite important to 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 continue strengthening the, the collaboration between us. Absolutely. We are looking forward. And we already started that, but we will take it further from, from now on. Uh, let me welcome uh, Dr. Farida, Farida Fassi, uh, one of the leaders in science, in science mainly in uh, physics. And we, are, we have been working together in various uh, dimensions, and maybe she can talk about this in, uh, in, her, in, her, in her intervention. Welcome, Dr. Farida. Your mic, Dr. Farida. So we have two Moroccans now, Jawad and Farida. But they are from different countries now. Jawad is in Oman. We can't hear you, Farida. Maybe text her, tell her that the mic might be mute. Okay, someone, yes, we'll all uh, Sarah. Um, uh, good morning. Yeah, now can you hear me? Ah, okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we are. <laughs> so, uh, uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you very much, uh, Yusuf, for inviting me to 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 form part from these great uh, <laughs> events. I am really very happy to uh, to be among us, and it is a really a great pleasure to discuss with you what I am thinking and to share with you what you will present. It is a really a great pleasure for me. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, let me welcome Sarah Jones from the European uh, Pan-European Pan Research and Education Network. Uh, hi, you is... yes, hi, all. Hi, hi. Good morning. Yeah, again, thank you very much for inviting us to speak here. So um, we're going to be speaking about European Open Science Cloud and the uh, potential for collaboration with the Arab nations. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Uh, let me also welcome uh, the young uh, researcher, Ola, Ola Zain. She's from uh, American University at Beirut. Uh, I've been there maybe four or four times, but I did not have the time to meet with, uh, the chance to meet with you, maybe next time. Uh, welcome, Hello. Dr. Ola. Uh, good morning, Dr. Youssef and everyone. I'm very glad to be with you all. You're all welcome to Lebanon. We're always happy to have you all around. So, not ring, inshallah, anytime sure. soon. <laughs> Thank you. Shukran, Thank you. Shukran. Okay, uh, my friend and colleague and uh, Dr. Professor, His Excellency Professor Amal Jarrah. Professor Amal Jarrah is uh, working now for uh, uh, the Arab Open University in Kuwait as vice president, but he was the president of my university, which was Jordan University for Science and Technology, which I am proud. It's among uh, the leading uh, universities in the region and actually in the world. Uh, welcome, Dr. Amal Jarrah. Thank you, Ibrahim. Thank you. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum, Jamian. I'm very proud to be here. I'm very honored to be here uh, to present in this session. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, one of the researchers that I am proud to know, uh, Muhammad Herzallah, he's uh, uh, one of the one uh, people I like to work with because he's not only a researcher, he's an initiator, he, is, uh, he has many initiatives. Maybe uh, we he talk about that in his intervention. Uh, Dr. Muhammad, you are welcome. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here. I really appreciate the invitation. It's, uh, it's really an honor. And I'm, I'm looking forward to, the, you know, to hearing all of your contributions here. It's, it's a great pleasure. Thank you very much. Perfect. I think I welcome all the speakers now. Uh, did I miss anyone? Okay. Uh, let's uh, allow me uh, to do some kind of introduction, short introduction and uh, how will the, the session go through. And uh, I, would, I would recommend that uh, 
everyone actually to, to keep muted. Uh, however, it's up to you to operate your video or not, but for the uh, sake of uh, uh, the sessions, please be uh, mute yourself and uh, let me share my screen to start the uh, session. Just one second. Uh, I hope you can see my screen. Okay, good. Yes, we can. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, I would be very quick, but some for some side I would take uh, this time for the sake of time, and uh, because we have uh, so about the session, I think you all aware by by receiving the invitation, you know what why we are doing this session so to avoid the you know getting the sessions and so on. Uh, uh, we are, the, our main objective is to how to see how all, all, we all, all together promote and all, uh, work on science to achieve uh, the SDGs and to support uh, our communities uh, through uh, this collaboration. And we will explore uh, how we can take the outcome of uh, the initiatives and the contribution, your contribution to the, to the to be uh, like a project or uh, how we can take it further. Uh, mainly, uh, let me uh, send the messages now for uh, how the sessions will be managed. Uh, to start with, I would like to uh, ask all the speakers to do, try to do your, do your best. We will, not, we will be, we will be, will not be tough actually, but we, because we have uh, 14 speakers, we try to accommodate this number of speakers in, uh, in this, the time allocated for us. So please, I try to make your intervention uh, in 10 minutes, uh, up to 12 minutes. So my colleague will be uh, telling you if you finish in a few, at, at the 10th minute, he, she will tell you that please, you have two minutes. And the, uh, most cases we will have extra one minute. So at most it will be 30 minutes to allow some questions and answers. For those who would be sharing their PowerPoint presentation, uh, please be ready, prepared, so that when when you when we call you, uh, try to immediately share your screen to avoid uh, wasting time in uh, sharing screens and so on. And please, for your business and for your organization and yourself, uh, please be sure uh, to uh, to focus on the in the second uh, phase and where we are going with objectives. So I would prefer that. I would recommend that you, you focus on uh, how you are supporting science. Um, of course, science means research, also includes research and education. And where are you if you have plans to specific to achieve any kind of uh, relevance to the United Nations SDGs? And uh, at the end of your intervention and conclusions, also I would love to see something related to the uh, SDGs and science collaboration between our region even at the national level, at the regional level, or at the global level. Uh, we are looking forward for a fruitful and uh, cooperation, uh, to initiate cooperation uh, towards achieving these SDGs altogether. Uh, we are happy that we have uh, a lot of uh, participants. These are registrations. Thank you for registering for the conference. Uh, let me send a special thank to Declan. Declan Kiran, he's with us now. He's the chair of the Science Summit. Also, he's the founder of the and managing director of the Intelligence and Science in Belgium, and we have been, we've been working together for uh, around the year. And uh, I would like to thank him again for that, for in, uh, for giving us the opportunity. It's a, it's really a unique opportunity. We have distinguished speakers, uh, fourteen speakers. That will uh, I, I put myself among the distinguished speakers. I'm sorry for that. I'm not that one. But we have speakers who have been in the, in the education and research for, for a long time. Some of them have been ministers, some of them have been uh, president of universities and leaders at uh, various institutions. And also, we, you can see that we have speakers from almost all over the world, from Europe, from Latin America, from Africa, and all of that. Uh, so I, I, I will not, I will skip all these slides. They will be available on uh, the website. Uh, these are about uh, what our research and education network. I think all of you are aware. So I will avoid uh, time, wasting time on these, spending time on this, not wasting time. Uh, this is about the research and education network around the world. You can see that our region includes a lot of uh, uh, in the in, 
And there is, I mean, National Research and Education Network. So for this, I think slide shows that there is progress, but still there are some countries that need to have some kind of endurance and initiate something. We are supporting all our countries to initiate and to support to start their endurance. Uh, this is the Global Research and Education Network uh, by Giant. Giant is, the, is at the heart of the Research and Education Network, and you would see all, all countries are connected. I cannot uh, uh, go ahead without mentioning the Human Connectivity Project and the Africa Connectivity Project, which have been instrumental uh, to support ASEAN's development uh, in terms of connectivity, infrastructure, uh, capacity building, and all of that. So thanks to the European Commission. ASEAN is the non-profit uh, organization that works for uh, uh, developing uh, infrastructure and supporting, providing provision of services to the uh, research and education uh, communities in the, in the Arab region. And we are taking a step further, which I will come to uh, very soon. We have various objectives. I think it's uh, all just, I mentioned the high level of uh, objective that we are doing. Uh, we are in a good shape in the Arab region in terms of uh, development uh, of endurance. We have endurance, as I said, said, in some various countries. ASIN is proud with its partnership with the various organizations all, all over the world. And uh, also, this slide, you don't look at it, it's just some kind of challenges that we are facing. Now, this, I will start with this slide to see where we are going as research and education networks, especially, especially ASIN. We believe we are looking at the worldwide observation. Where are they going? What's happening around and so on? So we believe something that we have uh, uh, like uh, uh, to, to watch. There, are, there is the United Nations uh, SDGs. Let me go to the next slide because I will go to everyone maybe in uh, 30 seconds and so on. So the United Nations global uh, SDGs are one of the, the main uh, uh, target of the United Nations. So, from our search at the, uh, as regional and uh, as regional regional research and education network, we look forward to support. Actually, we are we start working with supporting these. So, this event is one of them. For example, we can we are now promoting and uh, to raising awareness of the importance of SDGs and uh, at all levels, policy stu policymakers, students, researchers, and academics. We are trying to explore means and tools to. Towards achieving these goals, uh, we are uh, trying to enable sharing, exchange like this, what we are doing now, sharing knowledge and experience and activities between endres. We are you and us and our endres are working on this, not only uh, at the regional level, but, level, but also at the uh, uh, national level. Uh, we also look at the, another, another trend, and uh, uh, it's open science and open access and open educational resources and all of that. So we are now working on. Uh, that in various uh, dimensions, one of them is we are dis discussing with UNESCO and how we can together op promote open science uh, to the relevant stakeholders. We are promote, we are discussing uh, and promoting our uh, interest and at the national level to start their open data, uh, uh, open data uh, roadmap and so on. And open science again, we can also we are we are in the pos position that we can provide also applications and services. Uh, to support uh, this, this open science, and we are exploring what kind of, uh, what is the level of involvement of uh, endurance and regional networks to do to help on that. Open science platforms actually it's a trend. It's a, it's a fact now. We have the, the the model in Europe, European Open Science Cloud. I know uh, Latin America has also developed something. Africa has started the African Open Science Platform and so on. Uh, we are also trying uh, establishing the community of librarians uh, and uh, data specialists. Uh, we have a project called Libsense. I would like to work in, uh, thank Wakrin and Africa Connected Project for supporting us on that. We organize workshop and so on. And also uh, we are trying to, uh, we are now working at the uh, at Athens level to deploy uh, a regional harvesting platform to integrate uh, institutional and uh, national data repositories. Science communities and <coughs> communities of practice, <coughs> we are also working on various communities. Our focus on Africa now, because we have funded a project with the, with the, with the European Commission, Africa Connect 3, and we are discussing various, uh, um, uh, we have Africa Radio, Radio Astronomy Partnership. We have, uh, 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 we have partners, we have also, we are working with the Af African Group on Earth Observation. We are working with African Strategy for 
uh, applied and uh, fundamental physics and so on. There are various activities that we are doing. So from this, actually, we are uh, taking many good steps. One of them is that, that we have recently signed, signed an agreement with the Association of Arab Universities to work further. Uh, the sign, the MOU was in Arabic, so just I'm trying to, I will not I'm go through it because it's very lengthy, but we will focus on science and science collaboration within this agreement. Uh, we are taking this further to our annual conference. We have annual conference every year since uh, this, uh, this year is uh, virtually, unfortunately. We have uh, three main uh, events, the, uh, our uh, ordinary event, event uh, which is E-Age, and it will be associated with two other very important events. One of them is Arab, Arab Science Cooperation, which is something essential to what we are doing now, but at, uh, uh, it will be uh, associated with plans, with, uh, with initiatives and discussions and, and uh, arguments and so on. And the third day will be dedicated for uh, open science, and we think it will, could be the first Arab conference on open science, we, we are still, but it's, it also will be, we will, it will be in partnership with UNESCO and Association of Arab Universities. Uh, to avoid the lingua thing, that's all what I wanted to say and invite you to, to our conference. So let's uh, quickly move to our speakers and uh, let me invite and welcome uh, His Excellency Professor Amr Salama. He is the uh, Secretary General, General of the Association of Arab Universities. Professor Amr, Professor Am, the floor is yours now. Thank you very much, Dr. Youssef. Uh, thank you for inviting me to join this uh, very prestigious uh, group of uh, the distinguished guests, uh, dear uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to this distinguished audience. Uh, well, as you may all, we all know that the world continues to suffer amid this, the COVID-19 pandemic from protracted humanitarian crisis caused by conflicts, resource capacities, and natural disasters. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought forth additional challenges to an already faltering progress towards achieving the SDGs or the Sustainable Development Goals, especially in the global south. Of course, the Arab country, Arab region is included, of course. To be noted that the Arab Sustainable Development Report 2020 sounded the alarm that the region is not on track to achieving the SDGs. Also, the results from the 2021 SDG progress report for the Asia and Pacific show that the region is not on track to achieve any of the 17 SDGs by 2030 on its current track. The region may achieve less than 10% of the SDG targets. The, SDG targets. the 2030 agenda implies an enormous potential for universities. Universities can have a major impact through their global activities, their partnerships, and through the education of both their national and international students. Their potential influence on economic development poverty reduction, health, technology, and community building must be taken into account. The Association of Arab Universities, which was established in 1964, it's a not-for-profit organization established by a decree from the Arab League. Uh, and uh, we have uh, now more than 450 universities members in, in the association. The association has developed its strategic plan to contribute to the sustainable development goals. And I again, will ask you all to go to our website and look at our strategic plan, which was prepared uh, in the late 2019 and targeting 2030, uh, taking into consideration sustainable development goals. And actually it, uh, it was built upon a uh, a, a, a questionnaire which was presented to our universities and to other many stakeholders. <clears throat> Especially goals number four, five, eight, nine, 13, and 17. Such goals focus on inclusive and equitable quality education, gender equality, and women empowerment in education, 
fostering decent employment opportunities and innovation to the youth of the region, mitigating climate change and strengthening partnerships of sustainable development. The association is continuing its strategic projects in terms of creating an Arab qualifications framework, upgrading the Arab journals through an agreement with Elsevier organization and the Arab Factor project to assess the quality of the Arab journals along with the quality assurance programs in higher education in order to improve the outcomes of higher education and scientific research, as well as establishing the Arab Fund for Scientific Research for mobilizing resources for scientific research projects in the Arab universities. The association is working on the investment of the Arab European Network Ali, launched by the association in early 2014, in cooperation with the European bodies as an outcome of the Tempest project entitled Leadership in Higher Education Management for training university leaders and enhancing cooperation among higher education leaders in the Middle East, North Africa, and Europe. Furthermore, the association has included a set of partnership and cooperation agreements with many Arab and international academic parties. Such parties include Elsevier organization to help the Arab magazines to meet the quality standards for inclusion in Scopus database, the Arab League Educational, Cultural and Scientific Organization, Alexo, Coursera Company for Technological and Digital Services, and the Ch Chinese Technology Transfer Center to transfer Chinese technology to several Arab countries. The association has also, and, and many other actually uh, entities. The association also has also initiated several periodical conferences, symposiums, and forums in cooperation with counterpart associations in China, Europe, Malaysia, Turkey, Germany, and Russia. In addition, ARU has also participated actively on multiple Erasmus Plus projects focused on establishing qualifications frameworks for, for the Arab uh, states, institutional management, and student and staff exchange. Today, COVID-19 has not only raised the expectations we have of science, it has also shown that global challenges require global solutions. Working on the development of common research agendas, sharing objectives and joint research objects in all cycles of research on a cross-border and trans transnational basis will contribute to solve the complex societal challenges, challenges of the future including the achievement of sustainable development goals. Well, uh, let me say as well that uh, together with uh, the Arab League and uh, Alexis, uh, the, uh, we will produce the first Arab ranking, university ranking early next year, uh, inshallah. I think international collaborations in scientific research will become the norm and not the exception. We must all face the challenges, challenges with unity to tackle not only the, as a current pandemic, but also other unresolved crises, such as climate change, which both existential threats to humanity and will stay with us when this outbreak subsides. Thank you very much. And I think I took less than 10 minutes, which you required me uh, to do, uh, Dr. Yusuf. Thank you. Uh, Your Excellency, actually, uh, I, I, I'm sorry for the hard message, but uh, it's just to, it's to, yeah. I know you understand that. So thank you for making it on time and they really appreciate it and they really thank you. And we'll take uh, your uh, comments and your input and uh, to further uh, collaboration steps ahead and we will we will be in touch with you soon on that uh, let me again thank you uh, your excellency and allow me to invite his excellency uh, colleague and a friend uh, professor Ziyad Din Arafa 
Dr. Riyad Arafi is the Secretary General of the, of the Higher Council for Science and Technology in Jordan. He was uh, president of the uh, University of Al Bayt before that. Uh, I, as I said, I will make the introduction very short to make sure, uh, use of your uh, input. So the floor is yours, Professor Dia. Yes, thank you, Dr. Youssef. Uh, thank you, colleagues and friends uh, from uh, everywhere. Uh, it's really, uh, it's a good morning uh, to some uh, people and uh, perhaps it's an afternoon or an, uh, uh, an evening uh, for some others. Uh, in fact, uh, it uh, allow me to mention that this is really a very important uh, conference. Um, I think uh, this is really uh, stressing the point of uh, networking and partnership uh, uh, for cooperation and collaboration among uh, uh, colleagues in different uh, disciplines. And uh, in fact, it is uh, referred to as a short, it is uh, in short, a stimulus for a positive uh, change towards uh, such a co collaboration, which everybody is really looking uh, for in order to share the information and to be up to date uh, with, the, uh, with, the, with the science and the technology. I should uh, perhaps start with the big uh, questions uh, uh, in my talk, uh, which is uh, related to what normally people uh, ask uh, or want uh, from the people of science and technology. And uh, perhaps I should uh, mention that uh, we are looking for the future towards adaptation in order to cause a different, to cause a change. And this is really the theory of uh, change, uh, uh, which stre stresses the fact that one needs to adapt in order to make uh, the uh, change. Uh, I also mentioned that sharing the opinions and visions and strengthening the cooperation to create a new human-based uh, society. We are really here in order to serve the community, serve the society. So there should be, in fact, an impact uh, on the society. And uh, allow me, being the Secretary General for Science and Technology in Jordan, uh, to, to mention, uh, I don't know. Let me share. Can, can I share my screen? Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes, we yes. can see, we can see yes. it, yeah. Okay. But you are not changing the slide. Oh, yeah. No, there is something I need uh, just to move uh, with the, uh, uh, with my, uh, with my hand. Anyway, the Higher Council for Science and Technology is really looking uh, for uh, certain uh, global uh, challenges, uh, uh, industrial leader leadership and scientific uh, excellence, uh, looking for the pillars uh, uh, of the Higher Council, uh, uh, looking for a smart specialization, partnership and networking and the future for the uh, the uh, the uh, HCST in, in terms of the knowledge economy triangle. I should perhaps mention that there are certain challenges which are being faced, uh, and these are really uh, in termed as the global challenges. And this is in terms of the convergent revolution and the presence of the fourth international fourth uh, uh, industrial uh, revolution. Uh, I should also perhaps mention that there is a culture and impacts on sustainable developments for uh, such a revolution. The main goals are to achieve a capacity building and human resources developments. And this really needs fulfillment based on the needs assessment, mapping and the survey and developments for and um, re to reach uh, sustainability. Involvement for different parties, which it should involve, in fact, the government, the educational sector, and the industry. These are the main stakeholders, I would say, and the involved in, in this respect. Uh, academic excellence uh, in terms of the excellence, uh, uh, excellence centers uh, in which Jordan is really acting as a hub uh, for uh, uh, for technology, for uh, science, uh, the diversity within uh, projects and programs uh, that are being addressed, and the approach which we feel right now that it should be really multidisciplinary and complementary 
in its uh, themes and in its uh, missions. Uh, I should uh, also focus the, the attention that the era, uh, uh, the post-corona era, uh, the situation after corona is not the, the same as before. And one needs really, I mean, just to focus uh, and to mention that the governance systems are more important than one. And this is really one of the lessons that we have really learned uh, uh, from, the, uh, from the past uh, corona crisis. Productivity and self-reliance uh, 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 are also important. Changes in the science and technology and its ecosystem, which really uh, refers to the digital age, big data, precision science, nanogenome, uh, are really very important uh, subjects to address. And to rely on the actuarial sciences in order to predict the future and anticipate uh, what would be happening uh, in terms of this sort of uh, collaboration. Uh, perhaps one of the most important issues that uh, we are facing here in Jordan is the climate change. And this is really uh, not only a, a, a national uh, problem, but also a regional as well as an international uh, problem. So it should really uh, uh, look for uh, collaboration in term, uh, to address uh, such, uh, such a problem because it has different uh, uh, in the current production and it's really uh, consumption uh, different patterns. The evolution of the transfer is a catalyst really for the changing world and we are really living in a changing world. So we have really to make a change. And this is really in, in terms of the mechanism, the tools, the means and the methods. And by this, we should refer to the theory of change uh, uh, to apply the theory of change. Transition towards online learning and training is perhaps another, uh, another issue that uh, we should uh, look forward. And uh, I should uh, perhaps uh, state that uh, uh, in order to cooperate uh, with the higher council is really uh, uh, joining the efforts uh, of having 30, about 30, 30 universities here in Jordan in order to to make uh, such a uh, cooperation. And uh, in fact, I would uh, uh, define the learning uh, uh, organization as an institution or an, an, uh, an organization that is seeking uh, to learn. And it has been able to open in its structure, a culture for renewed ability to, to do three major things, to learn, to adapt, and to cause a positive change. And this is really time for a positive uh, a stimulus for the positive change. Um, uh, by now, I would say that uh, open science uh, is really open uh, uh, globally for uh, cooperation, for collaboration, for mobility, for connection, partnership, and network. And this is really, we have to make use uh, of that. Uh, also, I should perhaps state that the uh, one should make use of the uh, try low, uh, 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 which is really an empowerment for the knowledge uh, triangle. And this is really basically uh, uh, to connect uh, the, the education learning uh, to research uh, and discovery with the innovation and engagement. And this knowledge triangle should be really to find the, uh, uh, the right link between these uh, uh, three major uh, issues uh, in order to, to make uh, such a, a change. Another, another important uh, issue is a partnership triangle, which is referred to force and power uh, connected with the wealth, which is in terms in, in Jordan here, we have the youth and uh, in order to uh, mix with uh, the knowledge to make uh, such a change. Uh, for a smart uh, society, society, I would say that uh, in Japan, uh, for example, in these days, uh, there is what's called the Society 5.0, uh, which is referred to as a super smart uh, society. It has started with the hunting society, moved to agrarian society, and then to industrial society and then to information society. And focusing on information, uh, uh, we should refer to information, entrusted information, because in the presence of such a huge data, 
uh, there should be a filtration uh, for the information in order to make uh, uh, to uh, move uh, towards knowledge as well as uh, technology. So this is really the focus. In fact, is really on the society uh, after all. Um, uh, New specializations do exist after the fourth industrial revolution. And uh, I have just mentioned very few here, artificial intelligence, internet of things, big data, cloud computing, technolo technology of uh, finance, uh, electric commerce, uh, fifth generation of uh, uh, networks, uh, robotics, uh, blockchain, 3D printing, renewable energy and nanotechnology. And this should be really addressed by the universities in order to change the, at least the methodology that they are following. Um, uh, our strategic approach uh, here in Jordan and at the Higher Council for Science and Technology is based on a, a strategy a thinking uh, strategically and uh, being uh, uh, concentrating or focusing on the scientific excellence and uh, record uh, management. And this is really in terms of the centers of excellence which, in which Jordan is acting as a hub for diversity in projects and uh, programs. The selection and orientations for research developments and innovation. And as you can see that innovation has been really added to research uh, and development. Uh, 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 to define the thematic uh, priorities uh, and then to move uh, from theory into practice and focusing on training, the future prospectus, uh, as well as uh, thinking uh, in the future to focus on the multidisciplinary approach in which strategy and quality, connectivity, creativity, and complementary are very important uh, uh, issues in this respect and uh, sort of uh, linking the partnership uh, together with different uh, categories uh, in terms of uh, uh, education and the industry and trying to link the industry to education. International dimension, there should be also uh, an international flavor that should be added always to the programs that are being addressed in terms of the cooperation and coordination as well as the networking and partnership. Um, and in this respect, I would say that uh, uh, the uh, transformation has already occurred. In fact, uh, the Millennium uh, uh, MDGs, uh, in which uh, which are which have existed between 2000 and 2015. Uh, in which the goals, targets, and indicators, they were 8, 21, and 60. They have moved to or transformed into the SDGs, Sustainable Development uh, Goals, in which we have uh, 17 goals, 169 targets, and two, about 230 indicators. The priorities areas, they were focusing in the MDGs, the Millennium uh, uh, Development uh, Goals on human developments, however, Right now, the, 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 the focus is on holistic, economic, social, and, and environmental. And the development, uh, the scope is developing the countries and the scope uh, with the SDGs is universal. So one can really say that this is, these are really very important uh, issues. In Jordan here, we have uh, uh, defined uh, our priorities in terms of water, energy, food security, environmental and health and education and information technology. And these five major topics are aligned with the SDGs uh, that we, we have been uh, addressing. So we are really looking forward uh, towards cooperation and networking within these major fine priorities for uh, Jordan. The HCC conceptions in which it is really uh, responsible about uh, setting up the SDI policies to ratify, to define, and to draw the general policy for science and technology in the kingdom. And in fact, I would say that uh, uh, the one of the uh, other uh, conceptions of the CST is the human resources uh, developments, uh, as well as the scientific excellence uh, center, and as uh, one or some may know, that uh, the, the, uh, His Royal Highness, the Prince Al-Hassan bin Talal is the chair of the Higher Council for Science and Technology. 
And in fact, they follow uh, five major centers of excellence uh, that are uh, affiliated with the Higher Council for Science and Technology. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, these are the major five centers uh, that uh, they do exist. In fact, I would say that four of them, they have uh, been uh, in the past and they, we have two new uh, centers that have been established. One of them is the National Center for Nanotechnology, which is uh, uh, to be established at the Royal Scientific Society, which is the, uh, uh, the uh, executive uh, part for uh, science and technology uh, that to the council. And the other one is the National Information Center for Science and Technology, which, be, which is based on uh, data uh, that are being analyzed and transformed into information so that uh, one can really link them to uh, uh, knowledge as well as technology. The financial support for the Higher Council for Science and Technology is uh, to bridge between academia and industry. And we have one of the major uh, funds uh, is the Industrial Research and Development Fund. Another one is looking for uh, also to promote uh, in small and medium enterprises, which is called NAFIS. Uh, also, we have here at the Higher Council for Science and Technology, the cooperation and match making uh, between uh, uh, different uh, uh, programs, uh, services uh, to, to, uh, to look for uh, innovation in terms of services, products, and technology. Uh, we have aff been affiliated with different uh, programs and uh, cooperated on different international programs like SRTD, uh, Prima, uh, uh, Internet, MED, uh, international cooperation is really one of the, the most important uh, 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 pillars uh, in the Higher Council for Science and Technology. And uh, this is really uh, an important uh, programs that uh, we have. Uh, as a national policy, we have adopted the national policy for uh, science, uh, uh, the policy and strategy for the science technology and innovation from 21 to 25. And uh, these have been really uh, uh, stressed uh, on the five major disciplines that I have already pointed out. Uh, for, promote, for uh, promoting, supporting, maximizing, and developing and implementing certain programs out of that. By this, uh, I end uh, my talk, and I thank you very much for uh, this uh, important uh, conference uh, and for the time allowed uh, for me to share with you my information about the Higher Council for Assess and Technology. Thank you again. Many thanks, many thanks, uh, Dr. Uh, Dia, and uh, thank you for the very, very informative, and uh, for sure we'll, we will build on this all together. Uh, you, yes, so thank you very much again, and uh, let me invite uh, Professor, His Excellency Professor Omar al Jarrah. He is the, the Vice President of the Arab Open University. He's, he is now in Kuwait. Professor Omar, the floor is yours now. Thank you, Engineer Yusuf, and Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Um, uh, I'm, I'm very pleased and privileged to be in this uh, summit. My uh, brief talk will be about the role of Arab Open University in prom promoting science and in advancing the UN uh, SDGs. The Arab Open University started as a, a proposal or an initiative from His uh, Royal Highness Prince Talal bin Abdul Aziz back in 1996 um, um, as a project that will contribute to the development of scientific, social, and cultural spheres in the Arab world. 
However, this initiative um, um, يعني has uh, seen life in back in 2002 uh, as a, a, a regional uh, project for science and, uh, and education in the Arab world. And it was established as, uh, as uh, an Arab Open University in, uh, in Kuwait uh, back in 2002 under the Arab Gulf Pro uh, Program for Development Act Fund as a non-profit institution. Um, and uh, this uh, institution uh, basically now it started in Kuwait, but now it, it has a presence in nine different countries, uh, as uh, we will see. Uh, it stems from the fact that every human being in the Arab world has the right and capability to contribute to the national development in his or her own country. Um, and the main uh, policy basically uh, is to employ technology to achieve uh, democratization of education. And we, uh, as Arab Open University, focus on educational inclusion by ensuring that everyone uh, has an equal opportunity in education. And we believe that education is uh, the greatest equalizer in the world. And uh, the, the idea of, uh, of the Bay also another principle was to reduce cost on government so that uh, they can accommodate the higher and the growing demand on higher education. The vision of Arab Open University is to provide high quality education and labor market skills to all people. And here we are focusing on, uh, on the market skills and to all people because uh, we focus on the inclusion. Uh, and this comes through a flexible educational model. We adopt a flexible educational model, uh, basically uh, uh, that can uh, accommodate or reach to the, the, the basic principle or the idea that uh, the prince at that time, he was a, a very uh, visionary person. He uh, adopted the, the principle, if people cannot reach to the to universities, we have uh, to try to reach to people anytime and anywhere. Uh, and, uh, and now that we have an educational model, uh, which is blended uh, learning model that is now uh, you know, being adopted by all universities, especially during the pandemic. And uh, the second pillar in our uh, mission is to develop science and knowledge society by providing stimulating environment for scientific research and innovation, and also to contribute to achieving the sustainable development in Arab countries or Arab societies. Openness in, uh, in our university has many aspects. For people, it means all people, regardless of their gender, ethnicity, age, religion, or race. And we focus also on underprivileged people, on people with special needs. And we have unique programs, as a matter of fact, for people with special needs. As, we, as I mentioned, we also, the second aspect is time and the place. We have uh, no temporal or spatial barriers. We can reach to, uh, to our learners anytime and any place. Our method is open. We have a flexible uh, uh, e-learning model that's basically uh, built around the blended learning. However, we can uh, go to full e-learning under emergency. This is why uh, during the pandemic, we did not uh, face any challenge. As a matter of fact, we continue the next day by moving to the uh, full e-learning uh, mode of, of, of uh, delivery. We are open also to ideas. We embrace innovation in teaching and research. We also open to the market needs. Arab Open University started by a partnership with the Open University in the UK. Which is, the, which is one of the, of the oldest open universities in the world and the largest uh, to provide high quality educational material uh, because we believe that uh, e-learning is based on the knowledge, the, the content, as well as uh, the skills of the, of the faculty. So 
We started in 2002 in Kuwait. We have the headquarters in Kuwait. However, we have now presence in, in Kuwait, Jordan, Lebanon. 2003, we moved to Bahrain, Egypt, then KSA. 2008 to Oman, Sudan. 2018, Palestine. And now we have a project to start another branch in Morocco. We have served so far 231,000 students. We started back in 2002 with a few, a few hundred, 300 students. Now we have our enrollment student body is 42,000 students. And we are very proud that we have 58% of them females. We have so far served one people from 142 different nationalities. Now I will move to, uh, to uh, our commitment to advancing and achieving the SDGs, the UN SDGs. Um, uh, we have work that cover all 14 goals. I will just go over, briefly over all our, of our efforts on in every one of the, of the goals. For no poverty, we, uh, we provide affordable, high quality education for all. We believe that education can uh, help people to, uh, to be employed and, in, and, and improve their financial status. We focus on uh, women, uh, underprivileged people, people in remote areas, people with disabilities. We have a unique program uh, in the region for deaf and hearing impaired people. We provide uh, funds for low-income students. Uh, for zero hunger, we have uh, here just we, we, we try to focus on providing sustainable food choices in our campuses. And, and on, on health aspect, as we, we don't have the programs in, in health. However, we our campuses are smoke-free campuses, and we provide uh, sport facilities and, psych and psychiatric counseling for our students. For uh, the fourth SDG, we focus on empowering people with knowledge and the skills needed for the labor market. We leverage innovation in education and information technology to open access to all. We all have open doors for local communities through our unit of continuing education in the nine countries. Actually, in KSA alone, we have we have one we have five campuses. As a matter of fact. Uh, and in, in our training centers. For gender equality, uh, uh, His uh, Royal Highness Prince uh, Talal uh, was focusing on empowering uh, women, uh, especially the, at that time we have, uh, they have yani, the, the uh, woman enrollment in higher education was uh, very small. Now, as we can, as we saw, we have 58% of our student body female. Uh, we uh, also at AOU, we focus on the promotion of women in management and leadership at the university and uh, in all management positions. Uh, for, uh, for the sixth goal, we use water saving devices and uh, water wells in, in some of the campuses and we promote the culture of water saving among all of our staff and the students. We, uh, the, for the seventh goal, we uh, we are a paperless environment as we as you, it's an open university spreading all, uh, in, in, uh, in nine countries. So uh, we have a paperless environment. We focus on the use of technology and in some of the branches uh, that the in which the solar energy. Uh, we use uh, solar energy to uh, generate electricity and to, uh, to reduce uh, the CO2 em emission. Uh, for uh, decent uh, and economic growth, uh, we nurture the culture of uh, innovation and entrepreneurship among our students. And we also adapt a non-discrimination policy in all aspects of the university life. For industrial innovation and infrastructure, we have industrial advisory board in all uh, campuses. We and support also linking with local, regional, and international industries because we focus on skills. 
and also we organize international conferences. We help advancing the, uh, or reducing the inequalities by widening access to education for students from uh, 142 nationalities. We have equal opportunities for all people, regardless of sex, race, religion, or nationality. We have also opportunities for people with disabilities and deaf and hearing impaired people. Uh, for sustainable cities, we organize and participate in events related to arts and heritage. We support remote collaboration and work. We support also uh, the paperless environment. We reduce energy and water consumption on, on the campuses. We, we also support paperless environment. For climate action, uh, as I mentioned, we have already solar systems on some of the campuses. We all in all campuses we use building management system to uh, manage energy and water consumption to reduce water energy and water consumption. Uh, we uh, use green areas to reduce uh, the certification and uh, for peace, justice, all of uh, our university policies. Uh, 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 yani calls for proper governance. We have proper representation of students and student bodies. We also uh, uh, yani, uh, promote community engagement of faculties programs. And we have also uh, especially a yani, program or uh, law programs. Uh, for partnerships for the goals, we have, as, as I mentioned, also uh, yani, uh, uh, AOU is operating under the umbrella of ACFAND, which is one of the uh, largest organization in the Middle East that uh, works to advance uh, the SDGs. Also, we have several initiatives with, uh, with the UNESCO. Thank you. This is, I, I try to be concise and to stick to, the, to my time. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Amar. Uh, we look forward to for the 17th, which is uh, working all together. So uh, that's really excellent. And uh, I wonder if uh, I did not allow for ask for questions and comments because of the time. So if uh, uh, Declan sent a message that he was to intervene. Uh, Declan, you would like to speak now? Okay, then uh, let me thank uh, Professor Amar again, and we look forward to take the, what you have presented further. Uh, we can work, all work together, and we are we we, we see the the regional merit of your work, which is uh, very important for us also to to go wider. Uh, now, now let me let me invite uh, my brother, a really brother actually, uh, Professor uh, Bubakar Bari. He is the CEO of West and Central Africa Research and Education Network. He works. He, he Wakarin is one of the of the sister organizations that we are, we have been working together for more, more than ten years and so on. So Bubakar, Bubakar, let me invite you and please take the floor. Uh, thank you, Yusuf. Uh, I'm trying to. I don't know if you uh, you see my. We can see your screen. You can see my screen. Oh, good. Yeah, but uh, if you can take it to, uh, to the slideshow. Yes. Is that fine now? Uh... Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, good day, uh, everyone, and uh, uh, thank you for the organizers, uh, especially Yusef, for having put together uh, this session. Um, I'm speaking actually on behalf of uh, my brothers, uh, Yusef uh, Torman and uh, Matthews uh, Tumbuka, uh, co MD of ASREN and uh, uh, CEO of the Ubuntu Net Alliance. Well, um, we all know that digital infrastructure is, is very crucial. Uh, I think that uh, COVID-19 uh, has really showed uh, that uh, it, is, it, it is essential that we have 
this kind of infrastructure, especially for uh, research and, and, and education. Uh, maybe for those who don't know what uh, NRANs, National Research and Education Networks, uh, are about, um, NRANs are uh, actually mostly publicly funded uh, around the world. Uh, what they do is that they provide a dedicated you know, uh, connectivity uh, for research and education uh, uh, institutions. Um, uh, this could be, it's not just about uh, internet actually, because when people uh, often talk about NREN, they think it's about providing internet uh, ac access, but it's more than doing that. There are many other uh, services that are uh, provided by NRANs. And they are typically connected to regional counterparts, uh, meaning that uh, regional RANs in West and Central Africa connect to Northern and uh, Africa, connect to Eastern and Southern, et cetera, et cetera. So we are linked also with the uh, global RANs, uh, you know, uh, in Europe, uh, in Latin America, in the US, uh, et cetera. And these linkages actually uh, provide the opportunity for researchers and uh, to collaborate together uh, worldwide. Uh, currently, there are more than 100 NRANs uh, you know, in the world and with 38 in, in Africa. Um, well, what, how do we connect uh, the, the researchers, the faculty, the students, et cetera? So if you, if, if you look at the, it's actually something like a hierarch, hierarchical. So you come from the institutions like universities, like research centers, et cetera. They are interconnected at national level and they form a, a national research education network. So, so here we are giving uh, uh, examples of Renu in Uganda, of Garnet in Ghana, and Iron in, in Algeria. So, and there is national research education network at regional level. So they are interconnected to form the regional research education network. Here, Ubuntu Alliance for Eastern and Southern Africa, Wakran for Western Central Africa, and Asran for Northern Africa, and also for the, uh, for the Middle East, for, for the Arab world, actually. So, and these regional networks are interconnected with their counterparts in Europe, in Latin America, in the US, etc. So, who are we at, in Africa, for instance? So, we have ASTRAN, you know, for Northern Africa, uh, with the institutions, I mean, with the countries listed there. We have WAKREN for Western Central Africa, and we have the Ubuntu Alliance for. Eastern and Southern Africa. So, and you see here, for instance, that you know all these regional networks are interconnected worldwide, so that researchers, you know, in one country or in one region can collaborate with researchers in other region. So you see here, I think that uh, Youssef did uh, share this slide, uh, you know, in uh, in his presentation. So I want. Uh, uh, say more about this. So this is a global research and education network allowing researchers to collaborate worldwide. So uh, this is the history of RANs, regional RANs in Africa. It actually all started uh, mid 2000s with the AUMED Connect uh, project that is was funded by the European Commission. So this is um, then we had the Africa Connect 1 and Africa Connect 2 projects, and now we are going into, we are actually now in the phase of Africa Connect 3. And all these projects have been funded by the European Commission. And you see here the, uh, what we had in uh, 2010, and you see the progress we have made in 2016, and this is what we have in 2019. Of course, this has evolved. That means that more countries are now interconnected, you know, in the uh, regional, uh, in the global research and education network. So uh, this is actually uh, what uh, what was uh, shown in this slide before. This is just to say that today uh, we have thirty eight African RANs, okay, and. Uh, uh, 
you see here the uh, countries that are members of the various regional rents, Ubuntu and Alliance, here WACREN, Western Central Africa, and ASREN. But we also have to say that ASREN is not just for Northern Africa, it's also for, for the Middle East. So many countries like uh, uh, Jordan or Oman, etc., are members of, of ASREN. And this is evolving, meaning that more and more countries are being connected to our regional rents. So now let me talk about the Africa Connectivity Project. So this is the, actually the third phase of the Africa Connect Project that is being funded by the European Commission. And it started uh, mid-November 2019. It has a duration of four years and with a budget of 37.5 million euros. And as with the previous um, iteration of the project, so the European Commission provides 80% of the total budget and the benefit, uh, beneficiaries, meaning the three regional rents, have to provide the 20% of the total budget. So this is being uh, managed actually at the European Commission by the DG DEFCO, the now it's called DG INTIPA, International Partnerships. So, and we have three, four clusters. There is one cluster which is managed by Giant. Giant is the Pan-European Research and Education Network, uh, interconnecting more than 40 countries uh, in Europe. And Giant is actually uh, in charge of the global support and the coordination and also procurement. And then we have the three clusters. Cluster one, Eastern and Southern Africa, managed by the Ubuntu Alliance. The cluster two, Western Central Africa, managed by WACRED, and cluster three, managed by, Af by ASREN for Northern Africa. So now, uh, what do we have to achieve with this project? First of all, the overall objective of the project is to enhance human capital development. This is very important. And we have, of course, um, specific objectives linked to that. Uh, the output we intend to achieve is that first, access of tertiary education and research institution to affordable and adequate e infrastructure. We want to improve it. Second, which is very important, dedicated services and applications for our communities, research and education. Number three, adequate human resource capacity building. It's very important. And number four, that we always, always need is raising awareness, sensitization. So this is something that is very important for government to support research and education. So our activities are divided in work packages. The work package one is regarding upgrade of research education network and infra infrastructure. That means that we want to continue building our infrastructure through daily maintenance, you know, upgrading, extra, extra, and providing cloud-based uh, services. Word package two is about developing services and applications. And we want to highlight here something that is very important is trust and identity services, like EduRoom, you know, for mobility of researchers, of students, etc., and federated identity management for libraries, for instance. And something that is also very important is cybersecurity. That is one of the uh, elements that is uh, very important uh, to us. What package three is about capacity building. We all know that you know our best uh, you know investment is in human capital. So this is something that is very important. And we want to improve our governance through system reviews and have sustainability plans. Sustainability is very important because uh, we have at some point be able to, to move on with, you know, with our own means because the uh, support we won't be there you know, for forever. Sharing best practices is something that is very important and women empowerment. So we have a program, a special program for that and to empower women, to encourage them to, to go into steps. What packet four is about advocacy. 
as I said, this is something that is very important. Advocate, you know, for rent, for research education, and also engage user communities. Uh, because what we are doing actually at the end of the day is about, you know, providing services to the end users. And of course, show what we are doing through visibility and dissemination. In conclusion, what we are doing is actually provide connectivity you know, to recent education communities, mobility services, you know, for staff exchange, for student exchange, et cetera, having uh, cloud infrastructures in place and supporting open science, uh, especially through you know, our LipSense uh, project, and also engage with research and education communities, such as those that are listed here as example, AfriGeo, GMS and Africa, area, DAA, FAP, etc. So how, how are we doing that? Through conference and workshops. Now, as you know, it's mostly remote. Um, we also have to really uh, have a sense of the needs of our, the communities we want to serve, coordinate our activities, support institution to deploy uh, services like the room, edugain, etc., to promote uh, uh, mobility. Uh, other services that are very important to our institution and promote open science and open science platform. And as I said earlier, support women and empowering them to be more engaged in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, so. Here are our uh, activities. Actually, the conf as I said, we organize annual conferences, you know, in our three regional rents. So Wakren had its own in March. This is the, the period where we do our conferences. Ubuntu Alliance is the next coming. It will be in Livingston in, in Zambia in November. And of course, EH in December, that will also be uh, virtual. So that was my talk. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, <clears throat> thank you very much, Bubakar. It's really uh, for, for elaborating what we are doing. Actually, we are doing all together in the three clusters, so we are proud of our partnership and uh, especially the support of Giant Network in addition to the co funding provided by the European Commission. Thank you once again. And uh, now, uh, me... sorry, may I have a, a quick comment here in the, this yes, talk? Please. Okay, so as you know, we are developing the African, the ASFAP, African Strategy for Fundamental Physics and Applied uh, and Applied Physics, and what uh, I I mean, what the. Uh, uh, Africa Connect 3 is a really a great project that we would like if you could, I mean, globally in at the continent level to participate in this strategy. So, for instance, submit the letter of interest that describe the uh, African uh, Connect, uh, African Connect. So I would like to, to get in touch with you and with uh, uh, with uh, Bokar to, I mean, to, to develop this. And so uh, and in this way, you can present the letter of interest that can that convert to white paper and participate in the final report of the strategy. So sure, it will uh, work for you. It, it will be a pleasure. Okay. So let us get in okay. touch. I am a physicist myself. So. Okay, perfect. So I will get to Dr. Yusuf and you. I'm a nuclear physicist. So. Oh, so fantastic. So you will engage in other uh, field than the uh, Africa Connect. Fantastic. Yeah. Really, it's very, very, very interesting. And we have already opened the uh, the call for letter of intellect that will be the base for the white paper that form the final report. So it is critical for us to have your feedback and the project in the uh, in the final report. Thank you. Yeah, I will put, I will put my, my contacts in the in the chat. Fact. Yeah, let, let me, I, I will share your contact actually. Let me also add to Farida because uh, you, you have seen the list of uh, research communities that presented by Bakir. Uh, ASFAP is one of them. So you, you are on our radar as a as, uh, research community. So don't worry, you are interested that we will definitely uh, uh, be in touch with you. Okay, thank you very much. That's really perfect. Okay, let me uh, thank you again and uh, go to the next speaker. Our next speaker is also a friend and colleague. We have been working together for some time. 
especially in the COVID, we met uh, frequently during the COVID. Uh, he is in Jordan now, uh, Dr. Andrea Alwasi. He is the scientific director of the Synchrotron Light for Experimental Science and Applications in the Middle East. It's called Sesame. Most of you know Sesame because we used to promote Sesame in all our uh, venues. And uh, so uh, let me welcome uh, again Andrea, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I, I'm, I'm really pleased and honored to be to, to, to be here to, 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 to today and have the chance to, to meet you all because I think this is this is very important. So uh, what you see at, the, at my back is the internal part of, of sesame. So the, the, the machine is under those blocks of concrete. And uh, but if I may share my screen, I could quickly have you have a look also at um i guess i guess you all see my screen now yeah uh, so this is how it looks outside so it's a, a rather large building in the uh wonderful hills uh, northwest of of uh, amman in uh, in jordan and its symbol is a a circle because you know all synchrotrons are like uh, are made in this way. You need space in order to accelerate the, 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 the electrons. So you make them turn a lot of times around uh, as a closed circuit. And in this way, uh, it is also a very economical way to put many instruments around. So it's uh, inherently also geometrically a place of cooperation. You stay sort of around the round table and uh, share the same uh, the same source for many different uh, possible scientific uh, endeavors. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, just to update you, because uh, we uh, sort of disappeared uh, from. We were very young uh, before I arrived. Before my arrival, we were very young. We were just opened in 2018. The first big mines were opened. And uh, the first uh, 50, 60, 70 uh, scientists started to come and make and make and make experiments to the at that time two beam lines open. And then COVID happened, and I arrived uh, more or less at the same time. So I hope it's not bad luck. Uh, I, I didn't do anything. I, I promise. Uh, so and then we started after after lockdown. We started reopening uh, the machine, but for mail-in in so um, uh, experiments people had to send us the samples and we were uh, measuring them with uh, uh, some tools uh, like uh, webex or zoom and interacting with them and uh, no machine that allows uh, the users from outside to uh, control remotely experiments uh, all this is uh, very good in times of, of emergency, but clearly it is not the way uh, we were meant uh, to work uh, from the beginning. It's uh, it has it has been, in my opinion, a bit of a of a hiatus uh, now in the in the, in the development of, of the machine. But we did not stay still. We, uh, during COVID, we were still able to open a third beam line. So in in, the, in December two thousand nineteen. You see here this big instrument, the powder diffraction beam line entered into, into operation and uh, started uh, um, hosting users initially from Jordan and then with, 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 with mail-in. And uh, many experiments have been done and published uh, during this time. You know that uh, this is the life of researchers. You uh, do your experiment and then you need time to uh, elaborate the data and to uh, make the uh, the uh, write write the, write the article so that time was well used also during during the covid so the um, peer reviewers are uh, always active also during a, a pandemic and papers come are keep coming out and so uh, this was done uh, both on, in the IR spectrum, so uh, uh, with the uh, IR beamline for 
let's say, chem chemical fingerprints of objects, as well as for uh, fluorescence and, dif and, uh, and diffraction and uh, uh, exafs, uh, these latter two for uh, discovering where atoms are in, uh, in, in a sample. And as you can see here, the baseline uh, of uh, papers coming out of a facility like this uh, changes completely in the moment you turn on the machine. So uh, before 2018, a few papers describing the beamlines or doing some experiments in infrared with the uh, laboratory equipment uh, were published. And then in 2018, you switch the machine on and hey up the number of relevant papers uh, skyrockets immediately uh, with a with, 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 with a, a, a very encouraging pace. Uh, we are still building more uh, more instruments. Uh, so in 2023, 2022, next year uh, we will we will open two new beamlines to major endeavors of of Sesame and uh, of uh, our uh, friends, uh, especially in Europe. This is the uh, BEATS beamline, where uh, you, 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 will, you will be able to conduct uh, computer tomography ex <laughs> experiments with an, let's say, unparalleled uh, resolution with respect to what you can do with a laboratory source. And uh, uh, the HESEP machine will also enter, enter into, into operation and this will be the first soft x-rays uh, uh, beamline uh, that will be used uh, for at the beginning essentially for fluorescence measurements so you will get access to the l edges of all materials uh, which will give you a very good insight of chemicals on surfaces which is very useful for both technological and cultural heritage um, efforts and uh, after a while the so-called Texpus branch line will be added. This is uh, the sixth uh, beam line which will be available more or less in 2023, early 2024. And this is a, uh, uh, a, the first uh, of a new model, uh, a new, let's say a new business model of how, how you provide uh, beam lines uh, in, uh, in Sesame. That is uh, the um, possibility of uh, uh, having one member building an entire beam line. So Tarki will will build a uh, X-ray for photoelectron spectroscopy beam line out of this same um, source, uh, which will provide the photons to the HESET beam lines. Now, how are we going on? First of all, we have to remember that essentially a synchrotron source is a community, is the community of its scientists and the community with its users. Well, so the first thing important is to get the people again uh, to access the premises. And this is coming now. We are finally enough below restriction thresholds and we are since one month starting to send letters of invitations for the users to come. It is a completely different uh, uh, and I would say more proper way of using uh, uh, Sesame. It must be a place where people meet, exchanges idea, learns new, new techniques, discusses new, uh, new way of doing, 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 doing experiments thanks to a machine which uh, really gives uh, an edge over what can be done in, in a laboratory. I would like to remember you that in terms of brilliance, uh, the uh, availability of uh, energy, of photons, of number of uh, uh, intensity uh, uh, figures at a, uh, at a synchrotron are uh, the most successful uh, function that you can draw actually uh, much much better than the Moore's law in computer science. You know, that's, uh, the uh, if you plot one near the others, the increase of brilliance uh, in these kind of machines is is much steeper than Moore's law. 
then we keep going in uh, providing more and more instruments available for our users. We, so, but aside from strengthening the instruments uh, which are available, we need also to strengthen the infrastructure for, uh, for, uh, for IT. Uh, we are in a way at the, uh, attached to the same uh, uh, community of synchrotrons, which are which is operating worldwide, and when the entire community moves towards the concept of fair data treatment, Sesame must do the same. So we must be prepared to go in into a uh, a, a, a landscape in which uh, you can essentially keep and reuse your uh, your your data or anybody's data. So it's a fair space for findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability. It's a fair concept, which means that uh, the, the amount of effort put in uh, uh, taking measurements uh, will uh, uh, can be used and used again and used again more, but it requires uh, a strong investment uh, in IT, because otherwise uh, it's not possible. Then, as I, but this I just meant, I, I, I did already mention that we need to restart and support access in, in person. With this comes uh, a, uh, our need, our, uh, not only the need, but we also, it's also what we want to do, which is our mission which is to have a closer interaction with the scientific institutions in the region. Starting from hosting uh, uh, users and moving to developing uh, educational projects together. So uh, places where uh, a PhD can be made in collaboration with the university in the region. So uh, the student will come, could come here and uh, live in this environment and uh, participate of the life of Sesame and of the life of his or her university. And uh, this will, uh, one of the best ways in my, in my eyes uh, to uh, improve uh, the, the effect of Sesame over, uh, over the entire region. Then, Another thing that we must think of uh, at Sesame is uh, to uh, keep our relations tight with the international uh, societies and uh, uh, so such as IAA, uh, African Light Source, uh, ESRF, uh, the Synchrotrons in Europe, uh, LEAPS, uh, the League of the, uh, of Synchrotrons in, in Europe, and so on and so forth. And we are pursuing actions after action in this direction. I just wanted to quote this one here because it's it's very imminent. So uh, uh, I suggest uh, that uh, uh, you, some of you, I hope that some of you could send students uh, to this. It's, there will be a, a first ICTP school, so uh, based uh, virtually in Trieste, on synchrotron radiation light sources, uh, which we, I, we are organizing together jointly with IAA, ESRF, uh, LAMP, the uh, initiative for light sources in Africa, uh, in Americas, uh, in the Middle East, uh, the African light source, uh, and, and Sesame. Uh, Dr. Another Andrea? thing we should, yeah, two minutes. Sorry for interrupting, yes. Yes, so uh, I've, I've finished. So the CH network just wanted to discuss. This is a, a new concept that uh, uh, we would like to uh, develop in the in the future. Having the only synchrotron which is actually sitting at the center of the cradle of history, the amount of uh, possibilities in archaeometry that uh, we have in front is tremendous, and uh, that could make mark. Uh, a specificity of Sesame for the future. Last and not least, 
Sesame can be a case study for the African light source. So uh, I invite you to uh, put your attention also on, on this joint conference, which uh, will be hosted by each text lab in Benin, but it will be virtual in, in November, in which again, uh, the uh, Africa will uh, interrogate itself about uh, the uh, possibility of building a light source for which Sesame can be both a case study, a training center, and a good uh, a good uh, partner. And with this, uh, I salute you all. And uh, in, instead of usual, thank you. I really I'm looking forward to welcome you here. Thank you. I really thank you very much. Uh, you, always, you always impress us and uh, putting a call that is really very important. So from us, I think from, uh, I can speak on behalf of my colleagues in Africa Connect, that we are so keen and interested to be, to be at the uh, African uh, community that you are planning in November. Uh, I think Sesame and Afrin, our Africa Connect 3, can both together bring value to this community in terms of infrastructure, in terms of services, and in terms of uh, know-how on uh, synchrotron uh, culture and uh, way of doing research. So uh, please count us all together uh, as part of this uh, summit or, or conference. Thank you. I Thank think, you so much. Uh, because Declan, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, thank you. I was thinking. Uh, because Declan is the, the, the chair of the entire uh, uh, summit for the last two weeks, he comes back and forth. So I, I would like to take the opportunity that he's now with us. If you want to add um, just short comments now before uh, we proceed with the next speaker. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe if you allow uh, Youssef. Go ahead, um, please. Because this infrastructure is, is very important and uh, generally it generates, you know, a huge amount of data and uh, that can on, only be, you know, shared, you know, through uh, adequate infrastructure. So I do think that uh, NREDS will uh, have to play a, a huge role there. Uh, not only, you know, uh, where it is located, but also you know, the institutions throughout Africa and around the world who want to use the data that are generated by the experiments, you know, of this infrastructure. Thank you. Yes, sure. That's really important. And we will, uh, I think, uh, because we are, we have partnership with Sesame because they are using our network and they know what is important to infrastructure and connectivity and they have, they have practiced that. So, uh, and we have, I have a discussion with Andrea for a long time on, that we can work together in terms of infrastructure and uh, doing research and uh, in, uh, put the right uh, uh, understanding uh, for the, the synchrotron communities as well. Uh, for the time sake, uh, and actually because I know that uh, I have been told by Sarah Jones that uh, she has to leave in uh, maybe less than half an hour. So uh, allow me just to jump uh, ahead with the agenda and invite uh, Dr. Sarah Jones. She is engagement uh, manager at the Pan-European Research and Education Network Giant. Uh, so uh, let me welcome uh, Sarah and please the floor is yours, Sarah. Excellent. Thank you very much, Youssef, for the invite and also for accommodating this. Um, unfortunately, I had another meeting coming up. Um, so, so I'm here to represent JEON, which you've already heard about, which is the pan-European network that um, provides the connectivity for all of higher education. Um, but I'll be speaking specifically about EOSC, which is the European Open Science Cloud. And this is an initiative that's been supported by the European Commission and all of the member states to federate the infrastructure. So already there's been a lot of investment in um, data repositories and, and storage platforms and high performance computing to enable researchers to, to conduct their research, to store their data and to share it. 
And what we want to do is to federate all of this infrastructure so that we can address the, the uh, SDGs and also to address those key societal challenges, which, which really require us to, to work across different disciplines. And often we find that the infrastructure is aligned with certain research communities because that's the way that researchers form themselves and the way they develop their standards. And what we're trying to do within EOSC is to go beyond that so that we're bringing together data from various different domains and enabling reuse in, in different contexts. So really the, the aim of, of EOSC is about federating this infrastructure. So we develop this ecosystem of the data and the different services. Um, and that's really to enable researchers to undertake their work more effectively, but also to support their collaborations, both within Europe and internationally. And I think this is why it's of relevance for UNESCO and for the Arab nations, because you know we're not a silo in Europe. We, we know our research communities are collaborating operating across the world. And some of the key principles we have in EOSC are openness and transparency and inclusivity. And we are very much looking to extend our work and to partner with relevant um, organizations um, throughout the world. And I think the role that, that you have, um, the Enren community um, in the Arab nations is very relevant because you're providing a lot of the e-infrastructure, this core connectivity, the ability um, for researchers to identify themselves, to get access to services. Um, and I think, you know, looking at the open science initiatives that, that we've already heard presented today, trying to explore connections between those different research collaborations and, and EOSC would be something we'd like to pursue. And within EOSC, what we're doing is trying to develop common standards for the data and for the access to the services using things like the ARC blueprint that you'll know already for the AAI through the Jayant community and ensuring that we can have um, interoperability um, throughout the world, not, not just in Europe. So to turn um, to the SDGs specifically, um, as you heard with, with other initiatives today, um, within EOSC, we're going to be addressing many of the SDGs. So because EOSC is a kind of multi-discipline um, activity, there are um, areas of expertise, for example, in the health sciences or in the earth sciences. So we will, through specific data spaces, be addressing like SDGs on good health and well-being or on climate action. But I think the main area that's of relevance to EOSC is SDG 17, because that's about strengthening the means of implementation and the global partnerships. And that's very much core to realizing the EOSC vision, because we want to be implementing infrastructure that adopts um, common standards and that enables us to work globally and to support global research. So in terms of the opportunities to collaborate with EOSC, um, there are many partnerships um, and parallel initiatives. So um, in, for instance, work that's going on in, in Africa around um, the African Open Science Platform and the WACRAN initiative that you've heard about already. Um, in Australia, the Australian Research Data Commons, um, various disciplinary data spaces, and also initiatives in, in kind of uh, different sectors, like in more in the commercial sector, like IRX. And throughout EOSC, we're trying to sign collaboration agreements with these different groups and also come together in um, kind of consultation fora, like the Global Open Research Commons, which is run through the Research Data Alliance. So I think it'd be really good to um, partner you know, with ASREN and others um, and to explore the work that's going on in your region and how we can collaborate with EOSC as well. So I'd encourage you to, to look at the EOSC Association, which is the new legal entity which is governing the EOSC initiative, to see, you know, whether you'd be interested in being an observer um, and to get involved. I, I think actually we've had some applications to the task forces from the Arab region and, and that's really fantastic to see so that even at the hands-on implementation level, we can make sure we're collaborating and also look at how we do that strategically through our governance as well. 
So that's a, a brief introduction to the EOSC work. Um, I'm happy to take any questions and, and also to listen in on the rest of the discussion. It's not brief. Oh, first of all, it's not brief. It's exact, uh, exact description of, uh, <laughs> and moving between uh, the top, uh, infrastructure to the topic and to the collaboration. A very good organization of your speech. So thank you very much. If thank there is any question. Sir. Okay, let me thank you again, actually, and then announce that we are we are in touch with the as Asrin. We are now, uh, uh, we are, uh, uh, our, we have members, we are members, we call it. Uh, yeah, yeah, we've got a few, a few members from the, from the region. Yeah, and as I said, we've had some uh, applications. Member, yeah. uh, from, uh, with, with EOSC, and we hope to extend the collaboration further. Thank you very much. Excellent, thanks, Yusuf. And uh, let's move to the next, our next speaker, my, my friend, uh, Dr. Nazar Hassan. He is the Senior uh, Science and Technology Advisor at the UNESCO in Egypt. Dr. Nazar. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Yusuf, and thank you uh, uh, for the invitation. Uh, I, uh, what, what I enjoyed uh, from the previous presentations, it, uh, uh, it was all a good prelude uh, to what I want to present today. Um, uh, in, even though I'm gonna zoom on uh, uh, something that uh, we want to present as, as a proposal or, or an opportunity, uh, um, it is under vigorous science collaboration for SDGs implementation in developing countries. Um, I'm from UNESCO Cairo office. And what we do for STI collaboration programs in the region, uh, these are actually uh, some examples, SDGs road mapping, decision support expert system. And that is our work with UNESCO, UNDESA, UNCTAD among others. We have a number of capacity building programs, uh, innovation technologies, application promotion and entrepreneurship. Uh, that is with ILO and the national authorities in different countries, mainly the ministries of science and technology and the ministries of higher education. Uh, we have a good uh, program for uh, uh, training under STI policies development for parliamentarians and decision makers. Uh, we are also working with a, uh, uh, a number of uh, uh, really known universities around the world, like Pennsylvania State University, uh, uh, doing new science and engineering curricular development, uh, is particularly in nanotechnology and biotechnology. And all these are kind of virtual programs uh, uh, where people can, uh, 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 in a very cost effective manner, actually get master's and PhD uh, uh, degrees. Uh, of course, uh, uh, we uh, 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 at UNESCO, we have launched the initiative on open science. And what we're doing here at the UNESCO Cairo office, we are actually supporting a new and innovative portal uh, that can actually help uh, uh, the Arab uh, 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 region uh, with its open science uh, initiative implementation. And we all know that there is a shift uh, from what we used to know as knowledge-based economies uh, to what uh, uh, the world today globally is called creation-based economies. Uh, and, 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 and of course, uh, here is uh, uh, um, uh, uh, some, some of the uh, possible barriers uh, uh, to science collaboration. Um, and this uh, mouse is working by itself. Um, uh, for example, if we talk about open science uh, movement, uh, what, what would be the possible barriers here in the Arab region? Of course, there is a huge gap in the number of researchers required uh, uh, um, 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 uh, uh, um, calculated as full-time equivalent per uh, million of the population. Uh, of course, we have uh, a huge number of college graduates each year, uh, and it's a huge wasted resource uh, because uh, these college uh, graduates actually uh, 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 end up uh, spending four or five years of unemployment before they, they decide to go somewhere and it might not be in their area of, of graduation. Of course, lack of employability for college graduates and the relevant 
market uh, 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 required skills and uh, the availability of the relevant capacity building programs, uh, uh, forcing uh, uh, many of these graduates uh, as a human resource to enter the ongoing uh, brain drain cycle. Uh, um, with that also comes a, 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 a huge gap in investment and targeted funds on R&D. Uh, none of the, uh, uh, the Arab countries today uh, spend uh, the 1% the mark uh, of GDP on R&D, everybody is less. And with that, of course, comes the dilemma uh, because the, the resources are limited. So which research work uh, uh, you should work on? Is it basic? Is it applied? Is it experimental? And uh, maybe uh, just go simpler. Can we actually collaborate on, on building capacities on well-proven proven technologies and, and, and that's for the sake of SDGs implementation. Of course, also, we have a, 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 a huge gap in the number of equipped labs and research centers uh, that work on joint collaborative research projects. And that's why we like the Sesame project. And we, we want to encourage, uh, actually, member states to actually take that as a good opportunity. And of course, uh, lack of regional uh, established programs for STEM education for women and youth, because these are also wasted resource if, if not used. Now, on the other side, uh, uh, for uh, UN SDGs implementation, you have a strong barrier. Uh, um, um, again, Africa alone is projected to need about 100 billion a year for the next decade. Um, a high level of inequality between rural and urban areas, almost. 50% uh, of the regional population live in rural areas, while uh, a rural areas population also account for 80% of the accurate poor population. Uh, um, of course, the COVID-19, as everybody said, made visible the inequalities across our societies uh, with a clear, huge wealth gap, access to healthcare, and a lack of safety net between the have and have nots. Uh, and of course, that uh, means that existing educational divide has actually widened further uh, for those students who lack access to internet devices and reliable internet services. And that is why we also uh, commend those calling for a strong ICT uh, 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 connectivity. And of course, the international community uh, within the SDGs, uh, uh, they said that they are committed to end extreme poverty, uh, which means that they are they want to target populations living uh, on uh, um, a dollar and a, and a quarter or less a day. Uh, the Global Science Development uh, uh, Report in 2019 indicated that those poor communities, they live without quality healthcare, education, clean energy, safe drinking water and sanitation services, nutritious food and reliable transportation. And these are uh, critical uh, uh, within the target countries and, and regions. So with all that in mind, uh, uh, UNESCO Cairo office actually uh, uh, during the COVID uh, uh, era uh, uh, started uh, thinking that uh, 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 with the outcomes of the different regions reports regarding the possibilities of SDGs implementation by 2030, we started actually exploring more practical means and tools to achieve the SDGs, not only answering the what question, but most importantly, the how question by using proven optimization methods and models. And what I'm going to be presenting today as an SD, uh, 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 as a framework for implementation or action, we would be happy to actually uh, 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 to, 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 to have, uh, to invite all of you to actually give us feedback and advice uh, um, uh, on how to move this action uh, into implementation. Uh, uh, this proposed framework actually uh, uh, calls uh, for developing countries to actually uh, uh, adopt four fundamental pillars, uh, uh, um, and, and these are for rural areas in a cost-effective manner, and with the given time frame by 2030, uh, they should be able to achieve uh, higher than the 10% uh, uh, of, of SDGs implementation. Uh, um, I'll go very quickly on those, uh, uh, through those four fundamental pillars. First of all, there has to be a well-designed poverty reduction and social protection policy. 
and 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 behold that has been a call by aristotle a long time ago calling that if you want a better stable and just society you need to increase the middle class and 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 by actually looking at that aristotle's initiative we are enacting the principle of leaving no one behind and that uh, would be done by focusing on the well-being and development of the most vulnerable and most impoverished uh, uh, 20 to 30 percent of each region's population. And that was a, a good example implemented in the case of Brazil between uh, 2003 and 2011. So it actually uh, uh, did have uh, a normal uh, a positive impact. Uh, the second pillar is adopting uh, what we came up with as uh, and called the pro poor sustainable consumption and production systems standard, uh, uh, which can carefully guide the community's choice in building the required infrastructure in the targeted rural areas, including the proposed housing projects, transportation systems, efficiency energy systems, among others, in the most cost effective manner. That is number one, but also uh, uh, create and develop a, a new full e green economy that is completely detached from environmental degradation, as well as the use of any natural resources uh, that would make uh, uh, those, uh, 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 pro this proposal to actually uh, compete uh, uh, with the other uh, current global uh, different economies. Uh, now, the adoption of this proper uh, uh, sustainable and consumption systems uh, uh, standard uh, um, should uh, um, uh, 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 induce a positive impact on almost all thematic areas of sustainable development, uh, and, and 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 that would also foster uh, uh, the STI systems. We know that STI is at the heart of the UN uh, uh, SDGs uh, 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 agenda, uh, so. Uh, uh, the pro pool would also lend the UN uh, so-called the technology facilitation mechanisms, the golden opportunity to, uh, to achieve its objectives, uh, which are basically the development and training of the critical mass of technical force and practitioners required to be mobilized to support, uh, uh, achieve the SDGs in these communities. And of course, the creation of a knowledge, uh, uh, of a knowledge hub uh, uh, um, for sustainable development, proven technologies, education, and utilization. It's mainly virtual. Uh, we all call for uh, knowledge hubs and excellence uh, uh, centers, uh, but what is to be put in there uh, and, and practically and effectively lead us to SDGs implementation is important. Uh, so this uh, 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 idea would target the, 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 uh, the municipal communities with all the technical and financial requirements clearly identified to implement the SDGs uh, 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 through carefully predefined set of technology standards. Projects must have policies and programs it advocates for. And of course, this would happen mainly through our strong network of universities, especially the uh, technology universities that we have around, not just in our region, but all around the world. Uh, the third pillar is to actually develop an agro-based technopolis uh, to replace most of the rural poor villages and small towns. And by doing that, you're actually helping giving them quality health care, uh, STEM and Tibet education, clean energy and so forth, uh, and which is the social dimension. And in addition, that uh, this would trigger a reverse city to ruler migration cycle, which means that uh, those uh, agro-based technopolis would be better than or faced by city dwellers. Uh, and, and of course, the fourth, uh, the, 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 the uh, uh, not but least fourth pillar is adoption of the cooperative model for governance uh, uh, and, and, and finance, where all inhabitants of those uh, uh, technopolis are spontaneously affiliated members. Adopting the cooperative model will facilitate better commodities flow and improve the opportunities of financing and microfinancing of all activities. Uh, 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 within uh, those technopolis, and that is the economic uh, uh, dimension. Uh, um, um, Dr. I, Nazar, I, I, are you a? Sorry, One, but two. yes, two minutes, please. Uh, okay, uh, I, I will not go into details on how 
the proper uh, 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 sustainable consumption production uh, 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 system standard work. But I will give an example, a good example for the housing, depending on the, on the tenants, uh, uh, each of the, of the technopolis will consist of a number of high rise buildings with enough apartments to accommodate the number of families. Uh, but uh, uh, by doing that, each tall rise uh, building uh, will allow for making use of wind regimes at high altitudes for continuous energy production. Uh, some buildings will use solar chimney concept to produce both energy as well as enough heat to desalinate brackish water. Each building uh, would also uh, have the necessary basic services uh, 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 um, and, 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 and these are uh, uh, in each building there are designated spaces for research centers, schools, health clinics, sports country, uh, um, sport courts and a huge marketplace and a dining commons which could serve at least one nutritious uh, meal a day. Uh, this is uh, 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 for example, ability to produce 250 kilowatt of electricity, ability to produce sufficient drinking water, using aquaponics system uh, uh, to produce nutritious food. Uh, the, all building furnitures are made of cement, precast, granite, stone, and PVC. All doors and windows are made of PVC. Uh, and so you see that uh, in terms of in, environmental uh, 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 commitment. Uh, it's very uh, uh, com committed to environmental uh, dimension. Uh, buildings are fitted with uh, water efficient gadgets uh, uh, using LEDs, uh, new innovative super efficient uh, 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 AC central system, and all tenants will therefore have clearly marked and identified fixed addresses, which is a requirement for secure bank uh, uh, loans. Uh, these are uh, uh, kind of a, a model for 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 the uh, uh, for for those housings, and, uh, and, and by the way, the framework actually uh, follow closely uh, the UN decade of action to deliver uh, on the global goals, the local action, uh, uh, and 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 uh, uh, and so and, and the people's action as well. Universities and research centers uh, need to support the development uh, uh, of 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 these. Uh, 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 um, um, uh, technologies, education, and utilization hubs, uh, and and as I said, uh, 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 maybe uh, five suggested uh, quick key messages. International community uh, uh, should be focusing on the well-being of the 20 percent impoverished people. High-speed internet connection is important. The creation of a series of knowledge hubs is important. Adoption and implementation of this uh, sustainable uh, consumption production system standard and the development of agro-based techno technopolis. And by doing that, uh, uh, we, we could be actually practically looking at the implementation of the SDGs uh, uh, maybe not by 2030, but 2050, but within 2030, we could have easily uh, reached a 40 to 50% implementation rate. And I think uh, that would be the end of my presentation. And I thank you for listening. Thank you again, Dr. Nizam. I'm sorry for my colleague interrupting you because uh, we are left with a big number of speakers and one hour. So thank you again, and uh, it's very inspiring. I think uh, we need to take much of what you have presented into our consideration when we were, when we work together. So if there's any quick, quick question to Dr. Nazar. If not, let me thank you again, Dr. Nazar, and let's move to our next so, speaker. Uh, yeah. The yes. Yusuf, we allow me, can uh, Dr. Nazar share with us if we, there is a, if this is a, the STI framework from UNESCO is available to public or? Um, um, well, I can share it on, on, on personal basis uh, with you, Professor Omar, okay. uh, uh, you. to look at it and maybe to think about uh, collaboration uh, uh, programs to how to implement it. That's definitely uh, a go, uh, uh, but we, we have not uh, um, um, officially presented. This is our first presentation of this work. Okay. Uh, thank and, 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 and that should be respected. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nizar, because I think there are some areas where we can work together. So absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Everybody, with everybody, I think we have something that we can do uh, uh, together. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that, to, uh, that I start seeing uh, collaboration. Collaboration already started. So that's really, really wonderful. So there is. A good result from our our meet our meeting today. I can see results now. 
uh, and but uh, but I think uh, Dr. Nizar, we need to share your presentation only. Would that be possible? If you can share it on the because we have the recording and we would like to also to uh, to share. To, uh, to, yes, yes, uh, absolutely. I, yeah, I, I, I I I think by actually presenting it today. We have actually, I don't okay, know, okay, that, that was a, 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 it can be called a, a, a launching to the idea, but uh, if needs be, uh, I think uh, uh, we, can, we can share it. Uh, as long as uh, um, I can put my, uh, uh, my email address uh, to it so that of people course. can come back to me. We will we will ask all the speakers to provide us with their with their presentations that it will be loaded on the, the same website of this event, yeah. And also there will be a recording, and we will also, also we will have some kind of outcome that uh, the entire uh, session which we'll also will share with you. Uh, definitely, what I can do is I can give it to you in uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in, in PDF care. format with my yes. email address on it for for contact. We we'll take care and, and, after that. Thank you very much. Okay, beautiful. Let, let me thank invite you. my thank you very much. Let me invite my friend and from Latin America. He has been awake from uh, 4 a.m. in the morning. He is in Chile. Uh, Dr. Luis uh, Cadena. He is actually the CEO of the sister organization in Latin America. It's called uh, Red Clara, which is a regional research and education network in Latin America. Uh, Dr. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Thank you, uh, thank you, Yusuf. Yes, please go ahead, my friend. <coughs> Sorry. Can you can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you and see your slides also. Please go ahead. Okay, perfect. Is uh, I'm going just to use uh, one slide because I I want to make some final remarks uh, to my to my participation. And and first of all, thank you very much for this invitation, Yusuf. Uh, to, to ASREN and to all the African uh, Research and Education Networks. It's, it has been a wonderful uh, conversation about the relevance of uh, uh, research and education networks in, in terms of uh, achieving the, the sustainable development goals. No? And, and, and in reality, I want to focus uh, my, my participation on a reflection on the role of research an education network, more or less in the same line of, of Bubacar, in achieving the, the, the sustainable development goals. I, I think uh, that uh, to achieve the, the sustainable development goals, we need the effect, effective participation of all the human, scientific, and technical resources that we, that we have at our disposal. And, and the entrants have the role to, to articulate and help to develop the digital infrastructure required by, by modern science. And, and this infrastructure is composed of several things, of, of course, of dedicated and, and security uh, connectivity networks with, with big bandwidths to, to be able to transfer big volumes of, of data, and, and also integrated with uh, HPC facilities, uh, processing, computing, uh, storing, you know, storage, systems, and many other services that are essential for the proper uh, development of the, of the scientific activity. Uh, if you see uh, all the countries and regions that are leading uh, the global scientific and technological development have these infrastructures in, in abundance. No? And, and I think it's a precondition for being able to develop uh, first-rate uh, science. The existing infrastructure that we have in the in the global south are very de deficient, and and these places, these countries, at a systemic disadvantage, that is impossible to correct without the huge investment in digital technology that are needed. No? And if we want to effectively support the achievement of the sustainable sustainable development goals, it is essential to consider this investment as a as a priority. Uh, those investments are of such a magnitude that they require the participation and contribution of multiple uh, stakeholders, telecommunication companies, multilateral banks, cooperation agencies, uh, science financing agencies, and governments are all key agents in the creation of these capacities. All these actors can not only contribute, they can also be benefited. 
in a scientific system, strengthening through infrastructure, a great impulse is given to innovation. And this is the basis and foundation for the development of new products and services. So I think we must overcome the, the dichotomy between providers and consumers when it comes to addressing such critical and vital problems as climate change, poverty reduction, food production, and many others. International cooperation and, and its mechanisms of action are also key in this, in this regard. In Africa and Latin America, as, as you know, we have managed to develop specialized infrastructures thanks to this international support. In the case of Red Clara, uh, and you see in my slide a little of the network that we have developed through, uh, through the, uh, all, all these uh, uh, past years, in, in the 17 years of, exist of existence of the organizations, uh, we have been able to build those, those infrastructures with a lot of support of, of the European Commission, uh, uh, as is the case also in Africa, but also from other uh, sources. No? And, and thanks to this investment, we have managed to build a digital ecosystem to support science that integrate products and services through various organizations in Latin America, in particular, such as ESCALAC, which is a uh, that support the HPC uh, high performance computing uh, uh, facilities interconnection in Latin America, interconnected through the network of, of Red Clara, or La Referencia that you already mentioned uh, uh, earlier uh, today, uh, that is the open repository uh, initiative that is right now with more than 3 million of open articles indexed through a, a harvester. And we already signed a, an agreement with African networks in order to support the, the use of La Referencia and the technology that, that we developed uh, in, in, in that region. Uh, in this, in this uh, sense, international cooperation and, and its mechanism of action are also key. No? In Africa and Latin America, uh, I think we, we have the big opportunity to increase collaboration uh, because as you probably know, this digital ecosystem that is required to support science is not yet complete. No? Our task, uh, and, and I think in the upcoming years is to complete it. We must do this to ensure that investment in science yield the highest possible return. With Africa, we have great similarities and the opportunity to extend this cooperation between regions that face with their different, very similar challenges. Our continents are connected, yeah, and you can see this in the slide, and this is one of the main reasons to show this particular slide. Uh, uh, not only by the, the similarities, but throughout infrastructure. Uh, and, and as you know, we have already, already been collaborating in, a, in common areas of, of actions. Our region, through Red Clara and the national networks, Escalac, La Referencia, and other key organizations that are part of it, is willing to strengthen and reinforce these bonds of friendships and mutual support. I, I really believe that we have a, a huge opportunity to promote uh, development through knowledge, and I hope that we are all able to take advantage of, of this opportunity. And, and you have my commitment and the commitment of, of Red Clara to, to increase this, this collaboration. I think that one of the wonderful things that the, our community has is that, uh, is that we collaborate a lot. And, and, uh, and uh, being able to provide the support to this collaboration to the scientific communities in our regions is something that is uh, really, really critical for all of us. Uh, and as you can see in the, in the slide, just as, uh, as a final comment, uh, we already have this connection with Africa. We recently uh, inaugurated the new connection uh, with uh, Europe, uh, the Vela Cable that is giving us a lot of uh, connectivity capacity that we expect to, to take advantage in order to, to uh, 
increase the collaboration with Europe and, and with uh, Africa. Uh, and, and this is a kind of triangle, no? Uh, and we have already been talking about, for example, collaborating in climate change goals and other things similar to that. I think it's a, a big opportunity. And in the future, we are looking to increase the connectivity uh, uh, among the countries in Latin America, but also we are looking to, to other projects like uh, the connection with Asia that is a, in, at this moment is a project. Uh, that is being uh, um, proposed and managed mainly by the Chilean government, but also with the support of the Brazilian and Argentinian government. Uh, and the, the dream that we have to, to get a connection to, the, to Antarctica, since uh, Chile is so close to Antarctica that, uh, that if one country can do that, maybe Chile or Argentina are, are the countries that can do that. Uh, maybe uh, in an in a, in a easy way. So thank you very much, uh, Joseph, for your, for your kind invitation. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Not a problem with the, the, the time in the morning. Uh, it's, it's always a pleasure to talk with friends and to, to express our interest of collaborate and extend this collaboration as much as possible. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I actually, uh, we are proud with this collaboration and we are uh, so enthusiastic both together to take it further. So that's really, uh, thank you again. And uh, if there is a good question, if not, let's move to the next speaker. Uh, Yusuf, Yusuf, if you allow, I, 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 yeah, I, yeah. Have, yeah, I have one next. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Luis, uh, for this presentation. And uh, um, I, I do think that we have you know, uh, a lot of, uh, as you said, uh, common challenges. So I, I do think that collaborating more uh, between Latin America and Africa will help us a lot. And uh, right now, how it's happening is that this collaboration is being facilitated uh, by Europe or by the US. So I do think that we should talk more directly. So not to say that, you know, uh, these partners that are very important, like Europe and the US, they are very important and we, we have to involve them. But I think that, you know, we should do more things uh, directly. And we are right now uh, discussing this uh, Angola cable, uh, you know, because you have this uh, link, you know, from, uh, from Angola to Portalese to Brazil. And what we are aiming to do is to, to minimize cost, you know, and, and, and to really be efficient. Short pass, the shortest pass is better for the research community. So, so it doesn't make sense, for instance, you know, to go from, from Africa to Europe and to US and uh, whatever, to Latin America. So it's not good for us, it's not good for our partners in Europe and the US. So what I would really uh, suggest is that we talk more directly you know, and with the support of our partners in the in Europe, Giant, in the Internet Two, uh, you know, and uh, uh, Florida Inter uh, International University, all these facilitators are partners. But we do our best to have an environment, you know, that is, you know, efficient, you know, for our uh, colleagues in our continents to collaborate together. Thank you. I agree totally to work on. I also agree. So let's work for, for this uh, and see the, how we can approach, uh, make this uh, approach who, who those who can help us. It is called South-South Cooperation. Actually, it's even, it is, it is supported by the European Commission. Uh, they encourage South-South co Cooperation. Uh, I don't know what, what is the mechanism actually for that. But I know that is it is they are encouraged that. So let's explore together how we can use uh, the, these uh, uh, main pillars of the Euro European Commission that they encourage South South. So let's see how we, what is the mechanism to make use of it. Thank you. Uh, let me invite my brother and the friend, the Professor Islam Abu Magd. Uh, we met him uh, three years. He presented at the League of Arab States. Now he's the vice president of the National Authority for Remote Sensing and the Space Sciences. 
uh, in Egypt, actually, and they are one, uh, we had presented a case study that he has uh, provided us on some of his research. Let me not really regret my introduction. It's, uh, the floor is yours, Dr. Islam of Magd. Uh, thank you very much, Yusuf, for inviting me to this uh, outstanding uh, uh, session on the uh, Science Summit with the Arab Science Corporation to achieve SDGs. Uh, let me first to uh, start with uh, giving the insights on how much on a national level Egypt made uh, a promotion to the open science on a national level that would act on the uh, Arab states regional level and the continental level. Uh, actually, we always assume that, uh, that the open science is just open data, or access, open access to the publication. It's uh, beyond this, it's uh, interoperability between the scientific uh, uh, infrastructures, uh, the sharing of the models, algorithms, the toolkits for, uh, for uh, uh, data mining and big data analysis. And uh, uh, this requires on a uh, uh, regional level, Arab states or a continental level, uh, a policy uh, that uh, uh, take care of all the open science ecosystems, uh, research institutions, universities, policy, funders, uh, uh, society, uh, all this uh, kind of, uh, of strategies and uh, actions that would promote the open science. In this context, uh, Egypt made a uh, change of legislations, uh, 20 legislations that support this kind of uh, open science being issued in the last couple of years. Uh, uh, funding envelopes being allocated to the open science, establishing infrastructures, 31 centers of excellence in 14 thematic areas being established, and the re-innovation of 56 uh, central labs 37 of these 56 central labs been accredited internationally to increase the quality uh, of, uh, uh, of the research products and innovation. Uh, I believe uh, such a kind of uh, legislation, funding, and uh, initiative applications is quite important to take these principles in a regional and the continental level that allow for open science and sharing knowledge, experience, interoperability between the Arab states and Egypt. Uh, uh, why we are promoting this, uh, particularly for space technology? Uh, since we are uh, established uh, uh, our continental, uh, African continental space policy and African continental space strategy, which end up to the uh, establishing of uh, uh, African space agency, which we will coordinate and manage and implement or the space technology in Africa. This is quite a big achievements in Africa that would create interlinks with uh, Africa Connect, with uh, Latin America, uh, with Europe. But this should be built and developed by African citizens for African citizens. So this is uh, quite important to set up this principle that Africa uh, and the African uh, scientists and infrastructure should work together for uh, the Africa. Uh, uh, for example, for the time being, if you look to some initiative like Genocide Africa, which has been in supporting from uh, uh, Europe uh, for the Earth observation, and how much is this is based technology and the Earth observation to achieve the UN agenda or uh, our national agenda or African agenda 2063 on societal benefits and developments. We made a lot of uh, national and regional and continental applications, particularly for SDG 1, 2, and 3, uh, for potential fishing zones for oil spill monitoring. Uh, for example, uh, using the open science and open data access to use this data to make a robust application for oil spill monitoring and uh, in Mediterranean Sea and Atlantic Ocean is an achievement for the regional level and part of the Arab states and, and uh, North Africa. So space technology and Earth observation is part of the uh, uh, big tools that achieve the uh, uh, SDGs and the agenda. Potential fishing zones, how to use the three 
30,000 kilometers of coastal line of Africa and how much fishing from this coastal zone is going to be. Do you know that 65% of the global fish is coming from South Africa? Do you know that this 65% comes with a very minor GDP to the local community in Africa, North Africa? So why we need to maximize these resources to see why these resources doesn't meet the uh, uh, no poverty or zero hunger for uh, or improving when it will be. So Earth observation of space technology is playing this role into uh, down to the societal benefits and uh, uh, SDGs. We act now in the three different dialects. We work with the fishermen that directly to help the local fishermen how when and where to catch fish and how to be saved from uh, climatic uh, 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 disaster like uh, uh, high weather, extreme weather, something like this. So all this kind of data support with uh, uh, African expertise, uh, with models and data to support the local community for fishermen. So send them a little warning message about red, green, and yellow. So red, don't go for fish today. Green, uh, it's safe to go today. It's a simple way to communicate. In the middle, you talk to the policy and the practitioners, how, how the environmental variable, how to save, how sustainably use these resources on a, a long term. So Earth observation play a, a role in, 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 uh, in this significant uh, issues. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite uh, uh, happy that Egypt is hosting this kind of uh, African space agency. And this is why we are promoting this kind of uh, open science, open uh, resources for, for the region. Uh, unfortunately, for the time being in the Arab states, there is a, a bilateral uh, cooperation and agreement, but we haven't yet got something multilateral to make something for the Arab states. But in, in, the, in, the, in the process, how to uh, uh, talk together, uh, share uh, knowledge experience together, this would allow us uh, to uh, start thinking about the uh, cooperation, uh, real cooperation that meets our, our uh, uh, agenda. Uh, I think uh, we could uh, provide uh, a, like initiative of how to uh, adopt the Brima model in Arab states model. So Brima model is a pot of money that put by the uh, Mediterranean uh, uh, countries to put this pool of money to make uh, connectivity between the countries to make a research projects or to make applications that meets these regional challenges. So we could put this uh, pool of money and whatever goal in Arab states to ensure that we are working together co co collect collectively together to uh, meet our uh, agenda and challenge. I think this kind of, of, uh, of uh, initiatives would allow for the real cooperation and ensure that we are uh, uh, meeting our national agenda and regional agenda. Once again, thank you very much for inviting me to this session. And uh, I'm very, very happy to listen to this esteemed delegation. As Excellency Amr Salama, well, this talk was excellent. To Bakr gave me some insights on how to uh, ensure that the uh, African Space Agency would, should work uh, uh, for the benefit of Africa, connected with these all uh, uh, existing uh, heritage. Uh, 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 in Africa. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you very much, really, and uh, to be in, uh, the, the exact message and the right time and everything. So, really, thank you. And we are so keen that uh, I can speak on behalf of Abu Bakr and our colleagues that we yeah. are at, at uh, uh, Africa Connecting, happy to support uh, the African. Could you allow me, please? 
I have a comment to uh, Professor Ismail. I, I, I very appreciated your uh, speech really in the sense of promoting science, open science in Africa. And this is really in, uh, in alignment with the, the ASFAP, the uh, African strategy. I would like, I would love if you could give us your, uh, your email and you could get in touch with the steering committee, the African strategy. What you have said really is, uh, is our vision, our, our goal that we are working on. So please, could you put your email and we'll get in touch with you too. I will get, send you all the information related to African strategy and what we are, what we are looking for. And what we, you have already said is really in, in a good alignment what we are looking for. So my, uh, my yeah. pleasure, uh, Dr. Farida. I'll uh, put now my email on uh, the chat. Sure, we call Islam, the... Islam and Farida, you are already in the in the list of uh, course, uh, messages related to the conference, so you are there. You are all, already connected. I had, okay. I had, uh, so I had the same. We have we have uh, raised raise hand, uh, Declan. Yosef, Declan, go ahead. How are you? Good. Good. Excellent. Uh, hello, everybody. And first of all, uh, Yosef, congratulations on such a very stimulating and fascinating session composed of some wonderful, wonderful speakers. Um, I've learned a lot. Um, really, just by way of sharing some of my thinking going into this meeting and indeed going into the overall summit that we're organizing these, uh, these weeks, uh, but it, it's it's something which I, I just uh, will be familiar to people, but I just want to want to uh, reiterate it and encourage people to to think, and that is the uh, importance of the enabling regulatory environment. Now, to to state something you know terribly obvious, you will you will know that that data is is. Is science is enabled through data, and that's called variously, you know, science-enabled data and all the rest of it. Now, what is what is not as pronounced in terms of awareness and in terms of uh, discussion is the impact of regulation on this data upon which science is enabled. So, just breaking that down a, a little bit, you will probably be familiar with the uh, European Union's data protection regulation, the, the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. Now, clearly, you know, we, 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 this session is, is not designed to focus too much on regulation and there would never be enough time. However, uh, I would just like people maybe to, to uh, 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 develop an awareness of these issues in general. So, but looking at the GDPR in particular, this is an omnibus piece of legislation. So it, it impacts data, personal data for whichever use. But the point I wanna highlight here is that the, 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 the uh, regulation has extraterritorial application. And what that means, as you'll know, is it effectively applies everywhere. Now, um, and again, that, that is a simplification and there's, you know, there's rules and regulations, all the rest of it, but essentially that. So for the sake of this conversation, it's, so it's impacting on your science, you see? And I think it's hugely important that you, you, you take that uh, knowledge and awareness of that fact and you try to understand what it means in terms of the science you're doing, but also it's going to inform the partnerships and collaborations that you will want to form that others will want to form with you in the future. And of course, you know, you have Horizon Europe, but let's not just have a European bias here. I think it's very important that the, the, the general impact of this regulation is hugely important. And what it does is it, practically it's going to, it's going or going to, it does impact the transfer of data, for example, between Europe and Africa and between Africa and Europe and between Europe and the United States and the United States and Europe, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So of course it's going to impact in ways we, we, you probably don't understand yet, but I, I think it's vitally important to try and understand that. Um, now, uh, uh, so my, my observations there would be, 
um, try not to be passive about this. I, I think it does, it does need you to go forward and try and figure out what it means. And, and various people here today have spoken about their, their research strategies and white papers, which is very, very good. But these papers and these uh, uh, reflections need to understand the, the, the omnibus nature of data protection regulation. And of course, I've referenced the GDPR there, but also there's new regulations evolving in the United States of America. You've got a federal level data protection regulation. You've got state. California already has theirs in place. You've got uh, emerging regulation in India and uh, Japan, and some of these have relationships with the European Union and some don't. But I, I, I think it's an important, very, very important impact uh, on, uh, to understand on science, because it, on the one hand, it potentially is a barrier to the activities you want to undertake in terms of at a practical level, making partnerships or collaborations difficult. But at a, at a, I suppose at a more advanced opportunity level, it then will uh, allow you through working uh, and being regulatory compliant, and I'm not saying regulatory compliant with the European Union, I'm just talking about regulatory compliant with your own regulations and how those regulations relate to other regulations. But I think understanding that environment will, will allow you to take advantage of the uh, opportunity to, to advance and use uh, the, the data, uh, to do science with the data, and to evolve and go towards innovation with the data and do the things you need to do with data in order to do that. And of course, this has particular relevance in the area of, 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 of health, uh, but not only because we're now seeing health data transported via uh, satellites. So therefore, you know, the, 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 you know, the whole area of space becomes pertinent to regulation and the, and the German uh, courts last year ruled that uh, information on, on energy consumption is personal data. So that's just, a, in my view, a bizarre, but a, just a factual example. So how this works in future and informs your environment of a scientists is, is hugely important, but the responsibility is on you to find out how it, how it all works uh, and what it means. And I've, I've spoken about the, the data protection regulation, but there are many others, and again, in the area of health, there's a, there's a forthcoming regulation on in vitro diagnostics. And again, it will have global applicability. There's regulations in clinical trials. There's a new regulation on medical devices in the health space. And then outside there, you've got various biotechnology regulations. And then the European Union is coming forward with a whole raft of digital transition regulations, which are, yes, they're, they're, they're enabling the digital economy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but they have impacts on health and other areas. So that's really just what I wanted to sensitize people to here today. So I, I think as you embark on your dialogue and you advance to share uh, 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 knowledge and as you advance in your engagement with, with uh, strategic partners around the world, that this issue of regulation is going to be an uh, increasingly important aspect of the dialogue. And as I said, there's the negative, you don't want to impact ne negatively on what you do and told, oh, well, you can't be our partner because, 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 or we can't share data with you, or we can't accept your data or whatever, whatever. They're the negatives, but as I said, uh, there are positives. And I think being able to okay. advance this uh, is, is going to enable uh, that. So I, I, I think uh, just all around, I, I think it's hugely, hugely important. And then um, the other thing I just wanted to, to highlight, and you, you've spoken eloquently about research infrastructures and capacity building, and again, that that's that's vital to to extend, and and certainly is a topic where the where the where the uh, in particular the General Assembly and the uh, United Nations, particularly with reference to the SDGs, need to be much more advanced, and I think take greater context uh, and uh, of the existing knowledge and know-how contained in the work that, that you're doing, and uh, being able to support that further. And you're wondering about support, and of course, a lot of people wonder where's the money going to come from. Uh, that's of course always always the question. But I, I'm 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 learning a lot recently about development finance and development finance is the money that comes from the the World Bank and the IMF and the European Investment Bank and there's a host of others. And increasingly, I'm beginning to see the narrative and policy objectives of of these development finance bodies becoming more articulate in terms of innovation. So I think that should be part of your thinking going forward in in seeing how these bodies can support uh, what you want to do. And I suppose the, 
the, the final point I, I make is that I, I really think, again, from a European standpoint, that there should be a, a, an EU Arab science summit in the fullness of time. I think we have strong articulation between Europe and Africa and Europe and Latin America and Europe. And, but I, I, I think there's a great opportunities on, the, on what I would call the Arab uh, uh, Europe uh, 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 line of engagement. So with that, again, Yosef, congratulations to you on such a comprehensive, wonderful meeting. I'd encourage everybody uh, following this meeting, because I see it as a, as a process, to come forward out of this meeting with a very strong statement to the United Nations General Assembly, one which I would humbly suggest can form the basis of uh, this meeting in September next year. We came to the organization of this sessions, these sessions very late, only really in, in August, so I appreciate all your your efforts to make it happen given the short notice, but we have now a year's notice for next year. So we need to keep the dialogue moving. We need to keep the engagement going and we need to create a much stronger base for science in particular in relation to collaborative research and development at the level of the, of the United Nations. So Yosef, congratulations again. Thank I look forward to staying yeah. in touch. Thank with you. Thank you really very much Declan, for supporting and facilitating this for us. But I think we need uh, maybe need more than three hours to finish our, our is, is it open or it will close at the... Uh, no, it's I open. Mean, so that's, I, I, that's, yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. For your intervention regarding the regulation and so on, I think we are taking part of it with, at, the, at the small level, which is uh, we are trying promoting open data, uh, what, what we call open data policies and so on at the, within our industries and so on. It's, this is part of what you are talking about regarding the data and so on. And fair, we, we will take it further based on your discussion to be to be presented and discussed in our future events also. So thank you very much. And uh, for the time sake, I have a question from uh, Jawad Al-Kharraz, Reza Gizad. Jawad? Thank you very much. Uh, a quick uh, question uh, for uh, Professor Islam. I was really uh, uh, happy to say Motsensi, which is my original field, and it's linked to SDGs, some SDGs. I was wondering if there is any sort of um, network of uh, remote sensing and space centers in the Arab region, because what we see, and it's applied to all fields actually, the cooperation is always initiated outside of the Arab region. For example, when it comes to uh, a TIGER program, which is targeting African countries, it is the European Space Agency that, that initiated it. We had another project from NASA with five uh, Arab countries that participated in, in a few years ago. And also I did an activity with, uh, with ESA, uh, building capacity of water managers in, managers in the Arab countries uh, using remote sensing. But I don't see any, you know, south-south uh, cooperation or at least in the Arab region uh, uh, and, and, and unless it's initiated always by European side or other side through European programs, etc. So I would just, this was my question to uh, Professor Islam, if there is any kind of network or co cooperation between remote sensing centers in the region. Can I, can I just... Uh, uh, before Islam, giving the floor to Islam. Uh, actually, I have been for a long time trying to, uh, to promote the initiation of Arab group on Earth observation. And I still look forward. So maybe this this one uh, one community that I'm trying to build, maybe you can take also your proposal that we need to have Arab, Arab uh, community in uh, radio astronomy or, radio or whatever. So uh, and, uh, Islam, I think he's well connected even to... Uh, to Africa, which is the African group in Earth Observation, we can take the model to our region and so on. But le let me get the floor back to uh, Islam. Uh, the uh, Africa is, is uh, kind of uh, something belongs to the uh, GU group in Earth Observation, and it's a connective between the African member states to uh, work together on a something continental. It's a quite uh, good initiative that uh, work on uh, with GU. But as you might know, that GEO is a, an intergovernmental group uh, of organizations that has no uh, just obligation on the member uh, membership. So what we need, we need something that needs a commitment from the members. If we need something for the Arab region, we need something that uh, give a commitment. So we have to pledge some money, we have to pledge some, some resources, we have to uh, uh, act together to put an action plan on how to implement this global of Earth observation uh, on uh, uh, Arab region to ensure 
implementing the R challenges. But if we take it the route for uh, AfriGIS, it's, it's quite good and it will create an, a connectivity between uh, uh, the people. But uh, the uh, outcomes, I would say, wouldn't be as you expect uh, uh, if you made it uh, something committed, something under a concrete framework, because it's still geo as uh, as volunteer work. So uh, uh, it's a voluntary work from the people who is doing this uh, uh, kind of uh, membership. So a little thing about it, I couldn't, we could together make a, a draft white paper on how to make uh, this kind of uh, gathering of Arab states on air observation. I'm ready. I have some draft that I will share with you. And uh, maybe when I come to Egypt, I, I plan to meet with you and see how we can discuss this thoroughly and how we can start. Uh, I, I'll be glad. And uh, as I, ha I have two hats. Uh, one hat is still in the minister, um, counselor for the minister for space technology. So I have the uh, dialogue with the policymaker to take some decisions. Um, the beauty uh, director of the uh, remote sensing host could implement this as well. So uh, my role could facilitate and help how to get some uh, encouragement from the policy and how to uh, real implement it. Okay, I think we are out of time. Let me invite uh, Jawad al Kharraz. He's, as I said, he is one of the uh, young and um, in, actually what I like from his work is the initiation. He has great, created a great initiative with Secretary, he's the Secretary General of the Arab World Association for Young uh, Scientists, uh, Arab Ways. And I'm proud with that we have been, uh, we are in touch for the last uh, years and uh, we are promoting all together the collaboration as well. Uh, Jawad, please. Uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Youssef, uh, for inviting me to this uh, prestigious panel. It's a pleasure to be uh, among these uh, uh, distinguished colleagues. Uh, it's my pleasure to shed light on some SDG. First of all, World, uh, World, Arab, World, Association, Arab World Association of Young Scientists uh, was created in 2011 with the objective to contribute toward uh, reinforcing and strengthening the capacity of young Arab researchers to conduct relevant and high quality research that covers science, technology, many areas, uh, including environment, etc., uh, to advance science and improve the situation of uh, young scientists uh, through the Arab world. Since then, we, uh, we carried out a countless number of activities and several uh, of our members get involved, got involved in actively in science policy interface using tools such as science diplomacy, advocacy to enforce innovative ideas, coming from Arab young scientists, and we had the occasion to collaborate with science actors at the regional and international levels in many occasions, such as the World Science Forum, the World Economic Forum, as part of the science and technology major group at the UN meeting of, for example, disaster risk reduction, with EXO, GYA, others, uh, and other uh, science networks. So SDGs, as you know, are meant to guide global investment in development until 2030, with 17 goals, as you know, 169 targets. This is obviously an ambitious process. The clear demand of the UN is that everyone, government, private sector, donors, women, youth, NGOs, and individuals help to reach the targets set. In the Arab ways association, we believe in that science has a big role to play in the efforts to reach the targets mainly in the Arab region, which is cha challenged by so many challenges. I can mention few like quality of education, water scarcity, energy security, food security, among others. So in terms of quality of education, we the aim to contribute to SDG 4, which is ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. I would like to highlight here the initiative freshly launched, uh, which is the Virtual Learning University. It's a not-profit online university established during the COVID-19. Uh, the pandemic with the leadership of Professor Ahmed Nawi, the Moroccan German yeah, scientist based in Berlin, with the objective of significantly increasing access to quality higher education and training through use of information communication technologies. Uh, so we are a group of uh, sort of competence spectrum of highly skilled top scientists with long-standing interest in research teaching, in particular at Moroccan universities, but also worldwide, exploring uh, uh, what is decisive to, to reinforce teaching, taking into consideration the research and development, at our universities and uh, worldwide, we are willing to bring significant 
improvements and innovations in our education system. We are targeting at the first stage Moroccan uh, uh, undergraduate and graduate folks, extending our experience to Africa, Middle East. We focus on the access to higher and continuing education and renewable energy, energy storage, air, water pollution control, chemical, thermal, biological, and physical hazardous waste treatment, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, including climate change, global warming, environmental sciences, and uh, geological engineering, sustainability, etc. So a solution for the environmental crisis, as you know, is to educate and influence the manners of human being and to turn theory learned into practice, achieving an outstanding level of knowledge on green energy, green economy, policy making, ensuring a sound world for future generation and sustainable development around the, the topics, uh, the aforementioned topics, including water and land, low carbon footprint of the industry, life cycle value, impact on society, et cetera, et cetera. So as a matter of fact, the learners and instructors interact with, with one another using computer-based systems, presentations of case studies, practical exercises, hands-on work with equipment as much as possible. So anyone interested in this, in joining this university is more than welcome, feel free to, to contact me. I will now highlight the other SDGs in the specific sectors of water, energy, and food. As you know, it's impossible to ensure security of those resources without investing in science and innovation. And this could be done at the level of improving energy and water use efficiencies through new technologies, such as renewable desalination, for example, where we can provide good quantities of water with optimum amount of energy without any environmental or social risk and with good benefits of, for the crops. The technology and science should help in also reducing the cost of such technologies to make it affordable for farmers, and end users, etc. In fact, the so-called water energy food nexus, or let's say, let's call it water energy food climate ecosystem nexus, aims to coordinate between all those sectors to achieve the resources security in tandem. The integrated perspective provided by this nexus may have appropriate investments on the basis of consistent and effective water policy and governance. So a nexus conceptual approach should take into consideration the scale of analysis and existing institutional and policy frameworks. So it's also a lot about governance, not only about science and innovation, but also governance, uh, social impact, environmental impact, and economic impact. It should also consider the ways in which technology can improve the ability to achieve water and energy in a more efficient way and integrated manner that, that is people-centered and based on human rights. Uh, we have several projects in the Arab region where the implementation of this nexus is well illustrated. In Jordan, for example, we have Herbert Samra waste water treatment plant. This is a very uh, good example, or let's say success story, where the plant is a good example of cost-effective performance since it operates at 18% of the operational budget compared to global figures, which is around 25 to 40%. Besides, the system has reduced CO2 emission by around 300,000 tons per year. At, and the influ effluent of the treatment plants, 100 million cubic meters annually is used for agriculture production. So this is a very good example to, 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 to consider. We have also in Saudi Arabia, King Abdullah Initiative for Solar Water Desalination. We have other examples in UAE, Qatar and Oman, like sort of uh, integrated seawater energy and agriculture system, system where we use desalination, uh, uh, solar energy, to produce foods. And it's very, we have very successful pilots ar around the Arab region. Uh, also, we have in Morocco, the Agadir desalination plants. This is a huge project, which is the, the biggest one in the world in terms of providing uh, uh, desalination water uh, for agriculture. And half of it will be for agriculture. So this is really an another example of this nexus. So it's of utmost importance to lay the building blocks of the Arab region to achieve SDGs 2, 6, 7, and 13. I mean, hang, I mean the, the one, uh, related to food security, the one related to water security and energy security, and 13, which is the climate action, as well as other interlinking SDGs. It also represents the quest of the Arab region to place emphasis on matching commitments and plans with concrete actions with impacts on the ground. What should be changed mainly in this region of the world is that policymakers in our countries ensure the integration of the policy cycle for this water, energy, food, climate nexus. This should be done by improving the governance of, for, of those vital, vital sectors, which means adopting this nexus uh, policy making to increase policy coherence among the three sectors. Often we don't have really connection between each other. Uh, uh, Declan mentioned data. This is another problem. When I was working on uh, national and regional water information system, we had a lot of problems, not only on availability of data. Sometimes we have data, 
but they are not harmonized. We cannot really, you know, uh, 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 connect them with each other. We are using different uh, indicators, different standards, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so, um, in addition, the government should accelerate access to basic water and energy, create more with less, improve productivity and sustainable intensification, engage and actively involve consumers to change behaviors. So, also the participatory approach here is very important. We need to involve everyone. We don't uh, need. I mean, we, we shouldn't leave anyone behind. If we learn something from the COVID-19 crisis, is that the Arab region need to localize knowledge and technology. This applies to all fields, not only to water and energy. I mean, by designing incentives for local business, governments act, can, can attract domestic investments in manufacturing critical components and cultivating local innovation to attain economic sustainability. I give you an example. In the third three first months of the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, I was in Oman and some distillation plants were really worrying because China closes the borders and many of the chemicals and the components used in the plants are coming from China. So if there is any future crisis like this one or another crisis, this is really an issue for, I mean, for water security, for energy security, for many other things. So we need to really to invest on that. We cannot rely on international markets continuously. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, and then I wanted just to, to add that we should also support the existing technology center, science part in the Arab region, probably my colleague Nazar mentioned this, uh, expand support technical and vocational training programs, finally increase the regional R&D cooperation to ensure that the Arab region becomes an innovation hub, at least in some niches, like for example, renewable energies, the green hydrogen, which is the future economy, and some other niches, you know. Um, uh, so which obviously could contribute to many of the SDGs, as I mentioned before, to 6, 7, 13, and others. All the aforementioned statements were developed thanks to the collaboration. Personally, I was involved in through my, my, my organization, uh, and we were part of the good number of actors in the region, like the Union, Union for Mediterranean, Prima Foundation, Casa Remena, GIZ, uh, League of Arab States, European Commission, IWMI, UNESCO, RECRI, FAO, American University of Beirut, et cetera, et cetera. So we believe finally that the Arab young scientists can make a valuable contribution. We therefore look forward to Arab young scientists' initiative regarding SDGs, get inspired to take concrete action and promote interdisciplinarity, intergenerational collaboration, in particular in the aforementioned fields. And finally, we are open to all kinds of collaboration to boost innovation, promote science in the Arab region, and contribute to the achievement of several SDGs. Thank you for your attention. They will be happy to respond to any question. Really, thank you, uh, uh, Jawad, uh, Dr. Jawad. Uh, any question? Quick question, because we are uh, really out of time. Uh, so let's quickly move to our next speaker. Uh, she is uh, Prof Professor Farida Fassi. She's a professor and senior scientist at Mohammed uh, V uh, University in Morocco. Dr. Farida. Uh, hi, I will share my, uh, my slide. OK, so. Can you see my slide? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you very much for uh, the invitation. So uh, uh, with this talk, I will really uh, uh, talk about the initiative of creating the, uh, the Arab Physical Society, but for uh, this to introduce, to, uh, that was born before summer. So I have chosen the, uh, the title of my uh, speech today about the challenge of the uh, the Arab, uh, the, Ar the Arabic science era. So here, I mean, uh, as you, uh, you surely know that there is this, uh, during this, the golden uh, era, the, uh, the Arab world embraced science as a state definition policy. And this would really push to the golden era of the Arab civilization. I am, I, uh, I, in this particular era, the, uh, I mean, the, uh, there was an avid movement of translation, studying of uh, ancient books and uh, of creating the advanced new idea, uh, new, new knowledge, which are really created an unprecedented scale. Also, it's, I, I mean, as you, I, you, all of you know, it, the Arab scholar uh, score achieved in every field of science, mathematical, physics, etc., etc. And also, I would like to stress that at that era, the Arab leader encouraged learn 
uh, learning and the uses of reason to, to understand the, the nature. So now it's, I mean, I will focus a little bit about the, the relation between the Arabic science and the, and the, uh, the science revolution that was happening in Europe. I mean, the, this revolution in Europe laid the foundation of what we know the today, today science. So it was made to emerge of modern science during the, 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 uh, the early modern period when, develop, uh, when development in mathematical, physics, or kind of science transferred societal views about nature. The, uh, this revolution, I mean, was built upon the foundation of the Arab science and Greek. And the, the, here, there, I mean, in this, uh, I mean, in this era, I mean, the, the Arab scholar, uh, I mean, studies the, the Greek uh, writing and also add advanced new knowledge, new ideas that's uh, based on this, this version that was translated and arrived to, to Europe. And this kind of preservation of knowledge help to spread the interest in all the, the, uh, the Europe. So the, the key point here, the, the Arabic science really play a vital and catalyst, uh, catalytic role in, this, in the uh, early era of the uh, revolution science. So now from, I mean, since then, the scientific paradigm of knowledge production advanced relentlessly throughout Europe, but at the same time, and unfortunately, the Arab civilization and its contribution to the science start is long decline. So last to, to mention, maybe the last pronounced Arabic thinker of that era was Ibn Khaldun with the, this uh, fantastic, the, the basic tenets of modern socio, uh, sociology. Well, what could be the, the question that I was, uh, what, this legacy is really present the real pride that we should learn the, the right lesson to address the, the good question. I mean, for instance, we have to address a serious engagement in production long-term strategy and reforming in transformation the, the, science, the scientific research and higher education in the, in the Arabic region. So this is really a critical if the Arab community has to take its place a cool leader in the global scientific pro, uh, process and wrap the, the consequence socioeconomic benefit. And this could be, uh, could we happen if really we adapt as what we heard all the morning, adapt the science by the, by the state, promotion, effort, mobilizing science and bank the people, etc., etc. And of course, there is no doubt that physics has laid the foundation of enormous transformation technology over the last two centuries. Well, so the question that I am asking and how we can learn from the le 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 legacy, what needs to be done to give science and technology their due weight in the development process? So I believe Arab community should, should have to vested interest in advancing science and technology because this means that we could provide feed, we could provide food for people, improve, improve health, improve wealth, and also the, the, the science and technology could reduce the societal tension and build international bridges for widely needed dialogue and mutual. Understanding. So the Arab, the Arab world or our nation needs to embrace, as in the past, in the golden era, listen about science and technology that was uh, learn, uh, learned long ago. So this, this is something that really we have to, to take more seriously. Okay, so what are the challenges that's present in the 21st century to to handle the development of science and technology in the in the uh, in the Arab re uh, region, so we we are facing human capital fly, inadequate infrastructure, insufficient level of literacy, women's store, so shortages in the science, and also we are seeing weak linking between industry, science, and technology in institution. But this under underperformance is essentially because because of the return, return in investment and 
in science and technology is not appreciated by, by the Arab policymaker. So, so here, the Arab science community must come together to show how imperative it is to develop science in Arab world to effectively confront the major challenges within a globalization economy, which knowledge-based competition is promising a key role of higher education in development and growth. So to stress again, the challenge is great to couple with the science and technology gap in the Arab world. Well, what, the, the other question that they, I am asking, what could the physical rule, I mean, the help in this development? So we physic is an intrinsic part of the culture of all mankind. And the, the, uh, the, the importance or the essential of physics for the economy development is well established. Let's to see, for instance, today technology, economy, and their impact on society are closely linked with basic physics research. For instance, in electricity, transport, laser, magnetic, all, all uh, uh, internet, computing data, uh, I mean, computing science, and and in all which is related directly with the society. Also physics play a key role of sustainable energy as we have learned from Jawad. The bi biological and medical science have tremendous benefit from physical invented technology like electron uh, microscope, mass microscope and so on and so forth. So as you can see, is, physics is really play a key role in the process of development. So here I come to all the Arab physical society that, that I, would pres I would like to present you. So, so uh, the, the vision that's, that's behind this initiative, the, I mean, the, the, the physical society for the Arab region is really essential in the sense to create and promote joint scientific research among the Arab commu science community. Also, it will be a good foundation or framework to foster the growth of research in physical uh, science, especially, especially that would help or support the excellence and conduct research at the highest international st standard. We, we aim and we hope with the society to help in high level scientific problem engaging the Arab community, scientific community in, in a way that can promote in advance science as a fundamental forces for Arab, so Arab societal progress. So here we, we would like to, I mean, with the society to, to connect, to engage the Arab, Arab policy maker, as we have heard today, be, uh, in the direction that could develop within the, uh, uh, within the society framework. So uh, as you know, I mean, uh, several physical societies exist. I mean, this is not the, there are in European physical society, American physical society, uh, uh, African physical society. Uh, society. So we, we, we have, I mean, after discussion with the, and meeting with, Arab, uh, with our colleagues, we decided to establish the Arab physical society as the first physical society in the Arab world. So a piece should be, I mean, an independent NGO non-profit organization, which the goal or the targets from it is really to spread and promote physic knowledge and its advance, advancement, improve scientific education, and also, as I said, foster research and human capital building in the Arab region. So the, uh, based on the general assembly that we had in April, uh, 2021, the co-founder of this society are listed here, and we have approved to establish the EPS as NGO in France after, after study, uh, studying and investigating several possibilities to do it in Egypt, in Morocco, in Jordan, in UK, in, in US. So uh, at the end, we have decided, I mean, to, to, to register it in France and the official creation of the uh, society was June 20, 2022. Respect to the acro uh, acronym is 
EPS is chosen as a natural abbreviation of the society name. Basically, there is no copyright for the uh, the uh, the acronym, and also the name of the society is chosen with the, after making sure that there is no action. And so, I mean, active society with the operation. Let's say so. Uh, it's we have uh, we ha we had a, a very a very uh, caution to to take this uh, more in serious. And there is also the bank account associated with the with the success. So, so this officially is created with all related the related the aspect. Okay, here the structure. Just to 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 to, uh, to, to give you how is is structure. So there is what we call governor conseil. I mean the rule or the mission with this uh, GC is to coordinate the establishment of the society and handle of all the organization and management. And here you can see, I mean the the member, the president is a uh, uh, professor Shaban Khalil, and uh, I am the uh, secretary general. Also. The there is another core in this structure, what we call advisory committee. So advisory committee is formed from one Arab physicist from each Arab country, and the mission or the role that could this committee, uh, committee play is, I mean, provide advice and work closely with the GC in set up the proper strategy to ensure the success of the society activity. Also, there is another core in this structure, which what we call honorary member, and this is uh, here we invited all the permanent Arab uh, Arab uh, scientists that uh, in uh, I mean from different. Arab region to be to form part from this uh, from this uh, honorary member. We are think we have also set up what we call the focal point. The focal point is a person uh, we should one from uh, from every from each Arab. Um, Arab country, which is a very active, it should be a very active physicist that could really promote the society to and engage the local community. So it will be play the interface, the active interface, the dynamic interface between the society and every and all the Arabic country. Also, of course, there is the the uh, the, uh, the core, which is the individual member. I mean, we have created the membership form, and uh, uh, we are invited. All all the Arab community to engage with her. So far, we have the 300 register, and uh, I mean, it is growing, growing on. So this, somehow, this is the, the structure. And regarding the the mission or the objective, so I said, uh, our our objective is really to promote the excellence and creativity in the field of physics in the Arab region. Also to promote the cooperation in the field of physics education and arise awareness, awareness of its latest research by organization, the annual conference, workshop, uh, uh, seminar, uh, creating the scholarship, uh, the, uh, um, I mean, the lecture. So all these to, to really to increase the cooperation between the uh, all the uh, Arab, the Arab nation. Also we have we have the uh, among the objective of this society is to support the postdoc PhD student providing the co uh, uh, supervising among the other physicists to create the mobility in the, in the region like we we, we we know very well very wor working very well in Europe in US so this is a, a, a very dynamic way to to enhance the cooperation and to uh, to to encourage scientific and research collaboration among research and students in the Arab region. Also, we the uh, the objective is to participate in forming scientific communities in the field of physics and these scientific communities to join or to participate in the international institution and committee as Arab scientific representatives. So we, we would like to enhance the presence of the Arab scientific community in the different worldwide international scientific com uh, community. We have also think about the our prices and recognizing for the distingu uh, distinguished of, of physics to, I mean, to, to, to gratulate and to encourage more uh, distinguishable work. Uh, 
the, the, the point that also we have thinking is how we can highlight the importance between the theoretical and experimental physics and all the application re related to the, uh, the fundamental physics and its impact, of course, on the, on, the, uh, on the state economy and social progress. So this is more or less the main objective that we are looking for and we are, we, we are, we are working to achieve with the help of the engagement of all the Arabic community in the development of the society with i mean with the uh, with the aim to to successes at the end so here just i uh, really i would like to to say that the our the the uh, the great aspiration to really for a prospect arab world is to see an integrated arab world politically in, united and has a global influence arab world as a strong base on the vision of revitalizing the global arabic science era. We need to invest more in science and set up world class center that will over time transfer the scientific uh, scene. Creating scientifically educated people is the best investment as a country can make. So hope I would like to finish my speech here. Hope is not a dream, but a way of making dream become reality. And thank you for listening. Uh, let, let me thank you, sincerely thank you very much. I highly appreciate uh, your, your input to the meeting and to the uh, su summit, not only for, for our session. Uh, from our end at ASIN, we will support uh, this society. Uh, to start with, uh, I charge my colleague Yasmin will start uh, with you to have a press release, uh, news article that we will, this, it will be disseminated to thousands maybe tens of thousands of people from in our, in our network. So this is the first step. The second thing, I think we need you to be present in our uh, future uh, events and so on to, to help you in promoting this, uh, this activity. And uh, if there is any kind of book, I saw you on Facebook, I just followed you on Facebook, but uh, still uh, where we can find more information. If there, is, if there is a booklet or a brochure about uh, what you are doing, it will be great. And uh, the second, last thing, I would like the, to, other, to, to have experience, to, to take your experience, to take your experience to other societies and other communities so that we can build, because as, as I presented in my first slide that we are looking forward to build science communities because they shape the way of, of collaboration and so on. And uh, I'm sorry for taking a long time. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Hazal, I'm very sorry. Uh, now yeah. it's your. Uh, so please go ahead. Yeah, uh, sorry, just one. We are we will we are planning to start the school cycle that will run over the over the uh, the Arab region. So this is the the next immediate uh, project that we are working on. We are I mean, uh, uh, arm. Uh, sorry, yeah. there is a question from Bubakar. Bubakar, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Yusuf. Just a quick one. Um, I do think that there are synergies here because uh, I do think that uh, work has also to be done with the African uh, Physics Society. Okay, and uh, uh, I see Red One is uh, is uh, is also participating in this conference in this session. Uh, Yusuf, you know that we want to interconnect our regional rents within Africa. And, uh, you know, the candidates were like uh, Morocco and, uh, you know, and, and, and Mauritania. I do hope that we can work with Marwan, you know, to really- Exactly. Our, our and with Jawed also, I would like to engage Jawed also. I mean- with pleasure, thank you. Thank you exactly. I mean, what you have presented what, is extremely, extremely important. And I what guess we have me, to- Farida? Yeah, I, I, yeah, of course, sure. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Like, all of us, we have really of to course, enhance our collaboration. Okay. This is the, the, the objective of the summit. This is the objective. I mean, to learn from each other and to really to collaborate, to stress our, uh, our, our collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So thank you all. Let's move to the next speaker. Uh, I'm sorry for you, that you are uh, among uh, uh, the, uh, the last, uh, but not least. Uh, uh, Dr. Professor Mohammed, sorry for that, uh, for being late for you. Please go ahead. No, thank you very much. I am. Um, I'm, I'm really grateful to be uh, to uh, to actually uh, you know witness this uh, 
uh, this amazing discussion and uh, listen to all of the esteemed colleagues. In fact, actually, it's, uh, there are a lot of synergies and uh, there is hope. I completely agree. Uh, so thank you again very much for the invitation. Um, I mean, today uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try as much as I can actually to kind of you know fill in the gaps of what my great colleagues spoke about. But I'll, I'll, I'll share with you a very brief story, if I may say here about how we build brains in, in, in Palestine and how we actually try to build uh, capacity for neuroscience research um, there. And um, it, it will be very brief and I'll focus actually on the, um, on the SDGs. Uh, there are a handful of these. So basically um, it's going to focus on uh, well-being, education, equality and equality, infrastructure and peace. And we'll see actually how each and every one of these SDGs apply uh, or applies to, um, you know, our context in, in this in this particular domain. So, how how do we take these SDGs into this, which is basically uh, like an impending question, which is where is Palestine? And um, in order not to complicate things, because of the for, for the sake of time, actually, and <laughs> I don't think we have. Uh, the luxury of asking many of these questions here. I would like to borrow some logic from the late uh, Edward Said, who actually asked, what is the question of Palestine? And um, surprisingly, that was 1979, actually. And uh, up until now, I think it is still a question. Um, so if I want to define, or just maybe try to answer that in the, in, like, in the spirit of the SDGs, it will be basically the dire state of each one of the SDGs in Palestine. Uh, I'm not trying to be pessimistic here. I'm not trying to. Uh, I'm just trying to be realistic and reflect uh, what what we currently have there or what we currently lack there. So um, it, it also provides us with all of the opportunities that are open uh, for intervention and for collaboration and uh, for uh, um, you know the possibilities of what the future holds. So we can think about this in the context of its negativity and you know, be um, helpless about it, or we can actually devise a plan. And that's what we try to do actually in, in, this kind of, uh, in this kind of domain. We wanted to address some of these problems. And we try to actually uh, organize this using an experimental, like a, like a thought experiment and an experimental approach. Whatever we wanted to address or the problem that we wanted to, um, to actually tackle there should be focused on pragmatism what can be done, what is addressable, what is locally relevant and internationally applicable. It has to focus on people in its multi-layers, in, in, in its multi-systems. It has to be multi-dimensional in layers. We need to follow a bottom-up, not a top-down approach in order to solve the problems. And we want to always think about disruptive solutions and sustainability. With that in mind, if I would like to display four problems that we have in Palestine. The you know, monstrous political problem, economy, healthcare, and education. And I leave it to you guys to run these um, thought experiments on which one of these checks all of the boxes in terms of addressable, solvable problems that can actually, where we can, we can, where we can accomplish um, some form of advancement, even for a non-organized effort. For me, and based on my background, um, I always prefer simpler problems uh, that, for me as an individual, um, a non-politician, -polit non I can actually contribute to. Therefore, one of these simple problems for me, based on my uh, line of study, is actually the human brain. It is very simple. So basically, based on this kind of um, you know, flawed logic, I try to see how I can contribute to solving some of Palestine's problems by studying the brain and by focusing on the brain. One of the largest problems that we are facing in Palestine is an epidemic of mental health problems. It affects between 30 and 40 percent of the population. Whether we want to call it mental health or we want to give it any other names, people are suffering. And that's actually what we should really pay attention to. It's not just about the prevalence. It's also comp compounded by a very high level of social stigma where families are basically ashamed of their members who have uh, mental health problems, and it's not only in Palestine, I, I know that this, this echoes in the rest of the Arab world. And also, very few healthcare professionals. A population of, of uh, 2.9 million people in the West Bank, for example, are serviced by 24 psychiatrists. 
only two women, none of them are child psychiatrists for a population 65% of which is under the age of 24. It's not only that, unfortunately. It's compounded by mental power problems, and allow, allow me to call it mental power, because we have minimal research, and there is a huge brain drain where everybody who gets a, an opportunity or a chance outside of Palestine leaves Palestine and never looks back. So we're talking about a very complex problem that is layered. And let's try to actually kind of see if these all of these uh, boxes tick. Can we do something? Maybe. Is this a locally relevant problem? It is. Is this internationally applicable? As per the WHO, one out of every three humans suffer from some form of mental ill health. 300 million people worldwide suffer from, from clinical depression. Clinical depression, for example, and mental health problems are amongst the you know, highest determinants of morbidity and mortality worldwide. Is this focused on people? Of course, yes, because we are trying to solve this big problem that is um, a nightmare for the society. We're trying to train the young generation and we're trying to educate the society about the size of the, and the, the effects of the problem. And can we devise sustainable and disruptive solutions? There is a possibility. So let's see how actually we addressed that over the past decade. We designed this particular strategy inf informed by the earlier, um, let me call them um, ideas, primitive ideas about how this, this should work. And we designed these, these um, you know, um, um, let me call them trajectories that will focus on research, infrastructure, education, and people and their interactions. At the heart of Palestine, at Al-Quds in Jerusalem, at Al-Quds University, we established what we currently call the Palestinian Neuroscience Initiative, and that was 2009. And basically, we just wanted to explore the possibilities. We, I personally, I, as, 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 um, as a person with, uh, with uh, a background in medicine and, um, uh, and uh, neuroscience and mathematics, I'm a big believer in randomness. So it's all about trying. So that was exactly what we did. We tried. We approached the problem using different, uh, using different um, you know, um, uh, trajectories and uh, different combinations of these four uh, particular um, uh, trajectories. And it started with one person and one laptop, and that was me in 2008-2009. Now we are speaking about six research units at Al-Quds University in Palestine, focusing on various disciplines of neuroscience, from the cognitive to the genetic to the developmental to the molecular to the physiology to the computational. And not only focusing on the basic blue sky science, but also trying to solve real world problems by, by looking at again, informed by our focus on health and well-being, multiple disorders in adults and in children, trying to understand how these different scientific disciplines interact with these different clinical disciplines. And not only that, but how these scientific disciplines and clinical disciplines talk within each other in order to understand the complexity of these networks. It always give me, it gives me great, great pleasure to share the, like a, it's, it's maybe an old and outdated photograph of the team, but, um, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, these beautiful faces who are actually the, the, the power and the, the, the brains on the ground. And this is from 2017. We always maintain at least a 60% um, um, proportion of the PNI as women researchers. And we do all of our effort in order to make sure that they are you know, well uh, suited for whatever they're, uh, they're, they're working on in terms of their research careers, but also to fulfill their social and uh, familial uh, obligations as well. Over the past 12 years, we published 30 scientific research papers in peer-reviewed journals. We gave 50, 50 presentations at conferences, trained 250 researchers and students all over Palestine and raised $2.5 million for research. 17 of our students are currently in postgraduate degrees, and many of them have already finished and they started their careers. 40 graduate students, 40 exchange students in top-notch universities worldwide, 30 visiting neuroscientists from all disciplines, including multiple Nobel laureates. We held 10 symposia in Palestine, and we are maintaining 10 scientific collaborations with um, uh, you know, uh, big, really big and significant names in this field. We collaborate with scientists at these prestigious institutions, let alone actually sending our students for training there, 
most of the time it's not just for the actual scientific research, which is a byproduct all the time, but at least to kind of open their perspectives, to show them that there are actually different ways to contribute to Palestine and to build Palestine. This was covered significantly in multiple media outlets, including Forbes, TED, Science Magazine, Nature, Arabian Business, Ebru, you name it. Um, unfortunately, very scarcely any Arabic media outlets. A lot of people do the acknowledgments at the end of the talk, but I would like to acknowledge these amazing souls and these, uh, these funding buddies who actually made it possible for us. At least by showing their uh, photographs and saying thank you, sincerely, because you made it possible. Over the past 10 years, we focused on research, education, infrastructure, and people. The next 10 years, we will keep doing the same, and we will accentuate our focus on people. In collaboration with the Arab-Palestinian uh, investment company, APIC, we launched the 2030 Vision of Mental Well-Being in Palestine. Based on 10 years of research, we built tools that can, that can swiftly and privately diagnose mental problems and mental ill health in a matter of minutes, and all can be done online. What we're trying to do right now is to put mental health in Palestine online for everybody, for free, to build a, referrals, a, referral, a referral system so that any patient with mental health problems can actually um, benefit from that in the uh, in the luxury of their houses, in, their, in the luxury of their homes, in order to actually uh, tackle the, the social stigma problem. At the same time, we'll be doing research and understanding the size and the impact of the problem. We have launched media, um, uh, you know, uh, platforms and endeavors in order to actually educate people about mental health. And um, we started talking to policymakers in order to put mental health on the agenda. Not only that, we're trying to bring two Palestinian hospitals, significant new technologies, in collaboration with uh, leaders in this field, Alpha Omega, which is uh, you know, another company uh, founded by Palestinians in Nazareth, in order to bring deep brain stimulation for patients of Parkinson's disease in Palestine, based on our ability to do the research and to, do, to build the infrastructure. And yes, we can. We're trying to actually bring neuroscience in Arabic to the world in collaboration with Idrak, uh, uh, Queen Rania Foundation and to make sure that actually we start to speak the language in order to know how to speak to the rest of the world in this, in this particular discipline. We launched campaigns on social media to try to actually uh, you know, disambiguate mental ill health or mental problems and try to understand how does that impact us in very simple terms. Not only that, we started talking to school kids this was, um, and again, I should acknowledge the Minister of Education. And basically, it was a very, very simple lecture. It took two hours, and you should have seen the amount of interaction by our school kids in terms of trying to understand the brain and how the brain works and how can we actually get from the brain to the mind. So we will focus on people. People are our, our, our best you know, uh, um, and, and, and only asset in Palestine. The, 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 the ability to, to invest in people is the only way that actually will get us out of the state that we're stuck in, in our part of the world. It's not about building buildings. It's not about importing um, uh, all of these high-tech uh, machines. It's about people. And I really sincerely hope that you all join me in this kind of line of thought and um, call for collaboration in this kind of regard. I would like to end where I started with Edward Said and the question of Palestine. And I would like to um, uh, beg for Edward Said's forgiveness because I will modify just a little bit of what he proposed decades ago. And in order not to keep it in the question domain, I would like to propose to have the vision of Palestine, not the question of Palestine. Because the vision of Palestine would allow us to, you know, aspire, to, to look forward. However, I should maintain um, the ability to be a skeptic, the ability to, to be empirical, the ability to understand and realize when there is a, um, a narrative fallacy 
and to avoid at all cost the epistemological arrogance that arises from all of these realities. I hope that in the next decade we will put Palestine on the map as one of these places in the world where the SDGs are being implemented. And at the very end, I would like to call for all of the colleagues in the Arab world. We seek collaboration, we seek partnership, we seek well-being. So please, let's put our hands together and make this happen. Thank you very much. Uh, really, really, I want to thank you. I don't know to what extent I want to thank you. That's really great. To, let me start. I sorry, I will take some time. Uh, I think uh, maybe other, uh, from my end, I, I consider this the keynote of the of the the session today. I appreciate all input from others, but this is very touching and very impressive and uh, giving the challenges. Let me say first of all. Uh, you said, let's put Palestine on the map. Palestine is already on the map. You are putting it in the map with, map with what you are doing. You are one example, actually. There are, there are, there are many others. So Palestine is on the map. No, no discussion, actually. There's no doubts. Uh, in addition to that, from our end, actually, we, we offer that. Uh, again, we will take uh, the, the, the initiative further through our promotional uh, uh, media and so on. So my colleague will be co coordinating with you on uh, two, two things, uh, to put the news item and also to see if we can make a story on that to be published on our blog. The, th the last thing I think, let's discuss if we are, I, I, from my end, I can offer, uh, but depending on the requirements to host your uh, uh, data and so on in, in our cloud. Let's discuss this uh, together and see if we, how we can help. That's from my end. If there is any question to Mohammed, I uh, know that he was very, at least impressed me at least. Thank you very much. I really appreciate everything, uh, Dr. Yusuf. Thank you very much. So that's a great. Uh, that's, uh, uh, I, know, I know that. Uh, thank you for the patience, Dr. Ola. Uh, but but you are the uh, the youngest, so maybe uh, we try to just. Uh, uh, sorry for the, making you the last one. The last demon. Uh, there is a alkhira fi fi alkhira. You are the last and the best. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Yusuf, and uh, I'm really glad uh, to for to have to invite me to be among these uh, great and distinguished speakers. I'm the youngest and I'm here to learn from all of you and I really do. So I hope, I know you're all tired, but I hope uh, you are gonna change a bit of the mood and be active in this, uh, uh, in my talk. So I would like to start with uh, saying that uh, Although I'm a PhD holder with uh, a solid background in biology and then already faculty member at UB, but two years ago I decided to accept the position of the director of the Madigan Library and to be able to utilize all the possible tools to communicate science and become more influential in the society. I'm really trying hard uh, to support and launch initiatives that help achieve the SDGs. This is a sincere and a great topic to my heart. So uh, the UB libraries indeed support AUB's overall mission, which is to provide excellence in education, to participate in the advancement of knowledge through research, and to serve the peoples of the Middle East and beyond. The uh, library's direct and obvious impact is on SDG4, quality education, which is to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and to promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. So I was really questioning myself, why would I accept this position? What can I do to further influence the society through the SDGs? But I found out that our work towards goal four, which is centered around quality education, in fact affects other goals. It's showcased through the library's role as the provider of information and research tools, which have a direct impact on goal eight, work and economic growth, on goal nine, which is sustainable industrialization and innovation within our communities, consumption and production patterns, goal 12, as well as on the implementation and revitalization of the Global Partnership for Sustainable Development, Goal 17. 
attaining the set of goals support knowledge and access to data, which in turn allows for a more extensive space for creativity and for innovative opportunities through projects and solutions that are related to safeguarding our resources and conserving them, which ultimately influences most of the SDGs, in particular goals 7, 6, 7, 14, and 15. However, all these cannot be done alone. So what about say, say, our scientific cooperation at the national, regional, and international level to achieve these SDGs? Um, as the director of the library, I'm really involved in helping researchers perform the research plans, in collaborating with researchers, scientists, and healthcare practitioners from different countries in the world. These researchers are mainly involved in studying non-communicable diseases, different types of cancers, heart diseases, kidney diseases, which affect all of us, none of us couldn't be affected by these diseases. And much more recently, they're studying the coronavirus, which is an incredible example of how interconnected our world is. And for me, this is the great example of how much we must rely on each other for the greater good. So the researchers at these different faculties and centers at EUB, which I'm not going to mention just for the sake of time, they are involved in influencing health systems, management practices and policies in Lebanon and in the region. The centers have strong connections to overseas institutions and their faculty members have direct links with policymakers, stakeholders and influencers, both inside and outside Lebanon. Our uh, involvement with SDGs is also uh, valid through our partnership with research and academic institutions, both at the national and the international level, to facilitate the access and exchange of information resources. We also try our heart to raise awareness and promoting open access publishing among the community, and my colleagues have previously stressed about that. We also try our best to document and preserve cultural heritage for future generations, and not to forget this with all the technical technological advances. We also collaborate with local, regional, and national civil society institutions and governmental organizations to be able to serve and engage and empower citizens. We try to do regular exhibits and workshops which are open to anyone, to the public, because information is a human right. We try to collaborate with a lot of engagements and civic engagement centers to be able to serve even the marginalized communities and not only those who are at luxury of having access to information. We have a lot of projects which, fast, which um, uh, 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 showcase this collaboration between us and the rest. I'll, I'll mention one of them, which is the ACO, the Arabic Collections Online Project, which aims to digitize, preserve, and provide free open access to a wide variety of Arabic language books in different subjects. We have a lot of collaborators from New York University, Columbia University, Princeton, Cornell, Columbia, American University in Cairo, in addition to AUB. There are a lot of other projects and digital collections, but I cannot mention over here just for the sake of time. We also partner with a lot of uh, libraries and entities in the world, like Hathi Trust, Google Arts and Culture, and OSCs to work on several projects. Uh, the AUB University Libraries are also a member of the IFLA, the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, which is the global voice of the library and information professions. I've I've also had the pleasure to be a member of IFLA, a special interest group, which is Evidence for Global and Disaster Health Special Interest Group. This group works to promote and strengthen the role that librarians play in times of crisis and disaster and in response to global health challenges, which is supporting SDG 3, ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. I've had the pleasure to talk last um, uh, month in August in the IFLA annual conference where we talked about uh, health as a human right for anyone. Uh, we are also uh, collaborating with a lot of other university libraries locally and internationally through a lot of consortiums like the American International Consortium of Academic Libraries, AMICAL, LALC, Lebanese Academy Library Consortium, uh, other associations like Lebanese, Lebanese Library Association and Medical Library Association. So uh, we've been talking about that 
while we were in normal cases. What about the pandemic? The pandemic, which the recent one, the COVID-19, uh, never before did we uh, have, did we feel that we really need to attain these SDGs and we really need to work together because no one alone and the pandemic proved that no country was able to do this alone. This was also not only a pandemic, but also an infodemic. So uh, believing in the importance of reliable medical information and the right of proper health for everyone, back in February 2020, and when the first case of COVID was announced in Lebanon, I felt that I'm really responsible. My work doesn't end in the classroom or in the lab or in the library. So I, I took the trainer the trainers workshop that was given by several ministries in coordination with the WHO. And I started from there providing awareness sessions in layman language about COVID-19 in schools, universities, villages, aiming to reach everyone in the community. A lot of people don't have the luxury of accessing information that we do have through our computers and access. We also launched an online awareness campaign to be able to ensure an online presence and platform to cater for the community's concerns and questions via social media channels and using specific hashtags. However, I felt that I cannot stop here. So back in March 2020, and with the tons and tsunami of information that was published about COVID, and being a biologist and researcher and teacher, myself, I felt confused of what to trust, what's reliable, what to do, how to take precautions. So I started working on my free user-friendly COVID-19 resource center, which I started building I can say like a child step by step. So I started putting information reliable from reliable resources. And uh, I tried to make it uh, uh, um, target target every one of us. So if you are a healthcare professional, there you can find answers over here. If you're just anyone, a health consumer, a section is dedicated for you. If you're a faculty, a student, if you are in a specific MENA region, there's also sections for there. For mental health, I have, I've added videos for sign language videos. So no one should be left behind and everyone should have the access to information. I can share the link with you in the chat. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to go over the 30, 40 sections that are in the guide. I'm trying to keep it updated till today after all this time, because uh, 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 you, we know that medical information changes every day. However, when I was looking at the statistics and the views, and I had a lot of views, still now 14,272 views. But when I looked at who is viewing this website and the countries and talking about Arab collaboration in this session, I would say that I, I had mixed feeling of being happy and sad. I was happy because I had a lot of views from internationally, from France, from the US, from the UK, Peru, India, and almost everywhere. But I was also sad because only like two or three Arab countries were, were, were accessing that and were sharing this. So I, I really had mixed feelings because I, I was sad like this could reach internationally, but is not being used, uh, for, I believe, for my community, the Arab community. So the same goes for organizations and sites that share this guide. So I found that a lot of international organizations and universities who I don't have any, any uh, uh, contact with them shared it, but unfortunately, very little of of my organizations around made use of that. So I think this is one way where we should uh, focus more on, on uh, getting our hands together to be able to do something. So, um, and luckily throughout, because of this resource center, I was nominated as the first country representative for Lebanon in a global social movement called Healthcare Information for All, HIFA. So HIFA is really, um, I feel it's, it's a great thing for me because uh, it has more than 20,000 members from across the world. We work closely with the WHO. I was very glad that I was the first country representative for Lebanon because I share with Hiva their motto, together we can stop people dying due to lack of healthcare information. So I hope uh, we, I would be able to spread Hiva more in the region and to have more representatives from other Arab countries. Uh, I was also chosen because of this resource center as INCSA, the International Network for Government Science Advice, uh, policy-making tracker rapporteur for Lebanon. So uh, where we're documenting all the decisions that were taken during COVID in Lebanon, 
Lebanon and on based on which evidence, based on scientific evidence, or was it based on politics, based on what these decisions were taken? Uh, I wouldn't talk a lot about Arab ways, which my friend Jawad had uh, eloquently talked about that. We are both friends and uh, board members in this institution, which I believe it's an initiative that influenced the scientific operation between countries to support the SDGs. Uh, unfortunately, we lack funding, but I'm, I'm, we are still doing as much as we can to facilitate this linkage between uh, uh, people and youth, young scientists. We have around 18,000 young scientists who are in the region with the diaspora who are outside. So uh, uh, I, I, I love Arab ways. We incubate a lot of young, promising scientists who are involved in addressing not a problems which tackle one country, but transboundary problems, be it in health, agriculture, education system, natural resources, and others. Um, uh, I've also uh, uh, presented Arab Ways in the World Science Forum, and I've had the pleasure to participate in 2017, where I was chosen as the youngest woman, like today, uh, to participate in a plenary session entitled Young Scientists Identify the Skills of the Future to Advance Science Diplomacy and Society. This really paved the way for me to believe more in the role of women. We shouldn't forget women and the gender equality SDG when when talking about anything in advancing the society through science and technology. So based on that, I was also nominated as a member of the organizing and steering committee for the World Science Forum 2019, where I talked about two main things, challenges that young scientists are facing mainly in the MENA region, and also about open access and responsible research across the globe and across society. Despite all this, I believe we are still at the beginning. There are many things to do for the future. I will just list some of them. We are obliged to create platforms for scientific cross-border collaboration uh, for information sharing in the region. We should link existing diaspora networks and initiatives from the region with those outside the region. We should, and why not, develop a model similar to the European Union scientific visa package, which facilitates the admission of researchers between Arab countries. On top of all, we, could not, we cannot do anything if we don't change our mindset. We should change our mindset. We should consider all stakeholders. And science, and good science, should be put at the helm. It should be championed, in, indeed. Uh, but at the same time, we should be humble, because we know very little. And no one of us knows any everything. We should be open for a sharing culture. We should uh, uh, always stress the importance of communication and discussion. And we, as scientists, uh, should not only learn the physics and the biology and the math equations, but we should also learn the skills needed by us to collaborate together. We should learn increased connectivity, transparency, critical thinking, ethical research practice, integrity, and everything. I hope that at some point in the future, I'll be able to link science and society, to be actively involved in the policy making strata, and to engage socially by defending the rights of people to live in a decent way. Only together, we can save the elderly, the immune compromised, the children, our families, and can actually save the world. I'm sorry if I took a lot of time and I know you're tired. Thank you so much for listening and I'm open for any question or for any uh, comment. Thank you so much. Actually, we want to thank you so much. Uh, you did. Uh, let me first uh, thank uh, Jawad for introducing to us, actually. That's yeah. Really, thank you, Jawad, for bringing uh, members of your community to our community so that we this is this is a starting point to share uh, experience and see how we can work together so from my end to very quickly uh, i would not uh, take much time because we are uh, actually one hour ahead <laughs> late but but for two things actually my colleague again yasmin will contact would contact you for uh, add, doing some story on your uh, effort and the covid this is one the second thing because you are in the library, and we have been actually seeking uh, the sea counterpart in Lebanon for uh, because we are initiating something under the Lipsis project, which I mentioned very quickly. The Lipsis is an initiative that tries to promote open science and uh, integrate uh, open data repositories in the countries and work on national policies and so on. And we did a workshop maybe two years ago in Tunisia, and we invited the Lebanon, nobody came. So now I will invite my colleague Raed, uh, he will be in touch with you to, to, to let you know what we are doing in this regard. And we want you also to join the community 
of librarians because we are uh, because Lewis mentioned that we are trying to deploy their Francia, which is a regional harvesting platform to connect uh, the national uh, platforms and so on. We can take take this separately in a conference call with you. My colleague Ryan is in the call. He will arrange with you. Thank and you, Dr. Same, Yusuf. We, we, we would like to know more and to be more, uh, to promote also the HIFA uh, community, which is very important also. I'm sorry, uh, I'm speaking a lot, uh, but uh, because I actually I am proud of, with all of you. Yeah, we have distinguished speakers uh, and I'm impressed with all, with all your input and so on. Uh, if you like, uh, we can we want, want to say the last word or any kind of... Uh, uh, comments and so on before we conclude the session, it would be great. The floor is open for any comment, for any- I would like just to thank you, Dr. Yusuf, for uh, gathering us and for this uh, very, very uh, uh, rich uh, in information and knowledge uh, um, uh, session. And hopefully we, uh, we collaborate further in the near future. Thank you so much. Thank the same Dr. really yeah the same comment for for me it was really a great pleasure to know all the speakers i mean i know my, many of them but it is really to know more and as ola said really the time is to to to, to collaborate in efficient way this is uh, this is we can say many many but really we have to put everything taking the table and discuss and close our co collaboration this is this is really has to be done. And with Jawad, all of you all, and we have to collaborate really closely. Yeah, that's why that's why I mentioned in my uh, my uh, email last email, maybe it was aggressive or tough, but I mentioned that let's focus uh, on how we can collaborate and what are the mechanisms and so on. Exactly. And we will be happy to take all your input to see how we can uh, put it in a format that uh, comes, as, comes out as an initiative or a project or uh, collaboration with the, the rest of the world and so on. We will see how we can take it further, further. In addition to that, I invite you all to be part of our conference. It will be in December. Uh, I, I will share the details. As I said, it will have the three main uh, main events. The first one is our ordinary age conference, which is about infrastructure, uh, uh, services to the communities and so on. And the second one is related to something similar to what we are doing now, but with more actions. Uh, on science cooperation in the Arab region. And the third one is on open science and open science platforms and open data and open access. So we have three days of uh, to enjoy ourselves and have more time to express and to argue because now it's all most, more than presentation rather than discussions and panels. I could not do panel or round table because the number is great. And I am proud that Everybody accepted my invite, invitation. So uh, it was planned for two hours and it ended up with four hours. So maybe next time we can arrange uh, some kind of uh, more uh, discussion rather than just uh, doing a presentation and so on. So thank you all. And uh, all the presentation will be available on the same uh, website of the event. The recording will be also posted, uh, but it will take some time. And uh, I just want to say, Dr. Yusuf, if I may, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Jawad Akid, for getting me into here and getting to know all of you. It's really a pleasure. Uh, I would say there's no perfect time if we plan to, to start doing things. Let's take action. We have the brains, we have the human resources. All we lack is that we don't take initiatives at an Arab uh, level. So uh, let's be those who call to be at the table, not just wait for others to call us to sit in the on the table. So I hope uh, we will have another chance to meet together and to collaborate into actions and not just talking about things. Thank you. I will see how we do that from our end. I will be, we will be the convener for this. We are, we are committed to, <laughs> to, be, to be the convener. To, to, we, are not, we are not researching. Or to get us together. We, not, but we, we will be happy. Uh, to support and help and uh, facilitate and uh, offer uh, whatever services we can offer. Uh, well done, Yusuf. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bubakar, please. I was just saying, well done. Ah, thank you, Bubakar. That's well, uh, <laughs> our, our partnership always brings good results. Yes, uh, bye bye. Have a great day.
Thank you all. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. 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 It was very nice. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. It was quite interesting. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Really very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will visit you, Andrea. Thank you. To take Please come. Go for the next step. I mean, uh, I. I, I know that I am speaking with someone who is putting us in connection through internet. So this is that, but really doing it in real life, it's much better. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Goodbye. 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 Bye.